Hello and welcome to the Cyber Centres podcast. I'm your host today, Robbie Hardy. Uh, very privileged to say the least that we've got a very special guest with us today. A guy who had three stints at the club, all of which within that time won league trophies. He won a Scottish Cup, a League Cup, scored in big domestic cup finals and scored in European games. And most of all, he's got a pretty impressive goal to game ratio and all fun times as well. Of course, it's Mr. Kenny Miller. Kenny, how you doing, mate? All good, pal. All good. What about that intro, by the way? Brilliant, top level, top right, level. First one, isn't it? Must have had that written down, definitely. <laughs> hey, well, I've not told people this is my third take. <laughs> uh, how's this doing, mate? How's it taking you and the family? Good. Nah, all good, mate, all good. Just uh, coming towards the end of the season now, last six, seven games, so me start to get back to winning ways and uh, hopefully have a positive end to the season. Well, listen, mate, you've got a better tan than me, but you've always had a, a, a good colour about you anyway. Well, so. it's no fake now. It's no I was going to say, this one's real. <laughs> Right, mate, so basically we'll get straight to it. Uh, as I said, three stints at the club. First one came 2000. You had a pretty good season at Hibs a year before. I think you won Young Player of the Year. Uh, so I'd imagine at that time there must have been quite a lot of speculation around your name. Was there any other sort of big clubs that affected your interest? There was a few. There was a few t- opportunities in England. Uh, I think uh, when you younger player comes through and particularly forwards that are playing and, and scoring goals at that age, then you start to get a little bit... Uh, a little bit of attention, so there was a few clubs linked over the course of the season, and uh, the re- one of the one of the other opportunities that was that was concrete was West Ham. Uh, so I was on holiday at the time, and Alex McLeish uh, had phoned me. He was obviously my manager at Hibs at the time. He had phoned me when I was on holiday, and he was saying, "Look, the club of the club have accepted these kind of two bids. Uh, I want to speak to you." So I had to fly back. I fl- flew back for holiday to meet Alex at the. At Gatwick Airport, met him, sat, had a, had a cup of tea with him, and we ran through. He wanted me to stay for at least another year before I went, but and I think that was maybe actually part of the deal uh, to go to West Ham was maybe a an opportunity to be loaned back to Hibs for that season. So, but strangers came calling me. You know the drill. It was uh, it was too big an opportunity to turn down. So, uh, I I told him there and then I want to go. I wanted to go to Rangers. So he was like, yeah, as long as you're sure and, and you feel you're ready, uh, which I did. Uh, that was that. That was pretty much I was back on a plane, back on a plane to Italy and he was, uh, he was back up the road and that was it. It was pretty much things were agreed whilst I was still on holiday. Came back, came back a week later, got the medical done, got signed and, and that was that. Job's done. So, so West Ham, about 2000, that's when they had like Rio Ferdinand, Frank Lampard, the phone that, wasn't it? Probably I would have been around that time, I you know, all similar ages, I all kind of coming through at that at that moment. So I mean, great. I mean, they've, they've, all, they've always had that conveyor belt of young players at that time. It's a Rio's come through the four, your, your Carlton Coles, uh, Lampard was coming through at the time. There was oh, there was loads and loads and loads coming through at that Garrick time. Garrick as well, uh, Garrick. Garrick, that was the other one, yeah. So there was loads that obviously came through about that time. But that's it. It was it was just obviously being a fan. It was it was too big an opportunity to, to, to turn that down. And obviously the squad at that time, I mean, we played against them that year. Played uh, I played at Ibrox actually a couple of times uh, over the two the, the two seasons previous to that because my first visit was with Stenis Muir. Came there, I went there on uh, when I was on loan at Stennis. We were played the uh, Rangers in the Cup, uh, right. lost 2 0, but amazing experience. And obviously, going to going to Ibrox with Hibs, we never had too many results. I think we got beat 6 2 or 6 3, was in the last last game of the season uh, that we played Rangers, one of the last games. And I managed to score in that game at Ibrox as well. And it was uh, just too good an opportunity, pal. You know, like they came calling, and it was, uh, it was one I wanted to, it's one I wanted to look at. So you could have played with Rio Ferdinand behind you, but you chose Bert Cornelman instead? He wasn't there at the time, though. He was just <laughs> coming, so I was going to play with Amaruso and Craig Moore or Vidmar behind me rather than, uh, rather than uh, Big Rio, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. Obviously, they were talking about the squad that they had with guys like Ferdinand Lampard and stuff, but at that time, our squad was just as good, if not arguably better. So, obviously, guys like Van Bronckhorst, Alberts, Michael Moles can bring them off, but who for you were the sort of standouts of that team, do you think? So, listen, there were so many, you know, like when you go through guys like, like Giovanni who went on to Arsenal and obviously then Barcelona, again, Dutch internationalist, Arthur Newman, Dutch internationalist, played uh, had a wonderful career. Moles was incredible, Re- really, really good to work with him and, and, and play up front with him was, was great. We obviously signed Tori Flo for £12 million as well that year. De Boer came for Barcelona. 
for, uh, for four million at that time. So you had incredible players, midfielders, Alberts, Fergie, Reina, two guy. Uh, I mean, the list, like you say, the list goes on. Kinchelskis was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neil, again, with a good wee Scottish contingent as well. And Dodze, B. Terry, Fergie, big Scott Wilson. Craig Moore was like an honorary Scott as well. We had been there and been there for a number of years. So it was... Uh, but an incredible squad, it really was. But for me, Fergie was always the driving force. You know, he was always the driving force of the team. Uh, Amoruso, like you talk, and boys at the back, Amoruso, Sergio Perini, uh, Fernando, and Fernando came in that summer. Bert Conterman came. We signed Alan Johnson and Paul Ritchie at the same time as well to add to the Scottish contingent. So Peter Lovenkrantz, he was the same summer. He was the same summer as well. So really, really strong squad. But Fergie was always the driving force. But but uh, obviously it was surrounded by, I mean, it was a real battle to actually get a game in that midfield, never mind captain the team, which is what he did. So it showed how how good a player and uh, that he actually was, not, not just to play in that team, but to actually lead it. That's incredible, the squad. I just you mentioned him, there's fighting him. But, so even at that time, because as you say, we had that big squad, we were spending a lot of money. We still spent £2 million on you. We gave you a five deal, five-year deal as well, which I imagine you would have been doing cartwheels at. So I think yeah. because of the money we'd been spending, that was kind of brushed under the, under the carpet a wee bit. That was still a big feat to spend on somebody of that age. So did that come with any pressure for you or you just sort of that mentality where that doesn't worry you too much? No, it's just, again, it just, that, that kind of thing was, that's out with any control of a player, you know, like if a club decides to pay a fee for you, it's like you have no control over that. You've just got to go and do your job, you know. The one thing I realised quickly was things had to change, you know, things standards had to go up. And it's, it's not just in terms of performances and games, it was your everyday, everyday standards, the demands were put on you. I mean, again, I touched on Fergie being the driving force, but it was also the moniest bastard that one of the <laughs> I've ever played with. You know, but it's because he expected everybody else to be to that level, he expected everybody else to care and give a fuck the same as his level. So it was uh, early doors that you realise you're, 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 you're working with a different level of player. There's a, there is a different mentality to the every day's work and ultimately you need to win but you need to win and that's something that I've, I've always wanted to do whether it was at the back playing tennis or one on one with my brother or whether it comes to winning games and, and leagues and cups with Rangers so it was uh, something I, I, I wanted to be part of something I embraced big time but really realised obviously that your, your standards had to improve you had to get up to these guys standards we went through the list of players these are German internationalists we're Dutch internationalists Italian internationalists these are guys that have played at the top top level World Cup European Championships you know so it's uh, you are playing at a, a different bigger club bigger demands bigger expectations and, and better players so you you now very much have the reputation, or you did have a reputation when you were a player of someone who was good with the younger players, like helping about. Obviously, you're a coach yourself. See, when you were that age going into that squad, were you somebody who tried to like gather as much information at players as possible? Because the reason I'm asking is, I think you try to emulate that Mikey Molston, and obviously there's no oh, that Mikey Molston. I made that my own. <laughs> that's, now been, that, that's now been turned into the keyhole shuffle. <laughs> I'm not tying that by the way. I can, yeah. I, I, I'm a take throw ins and hit any channels kind of guy. Yeah. Well, I'll chase it then. You just hit it in the channel, <laughs> I'll chase it. So, are you, so generally, though, did you actually try and work on him to work with him, sorry, to do that? You know, that's, it's one of the things I watched him as a, as a fan the, the previous season and uh, when he first came to the club. And he's, that, that, that turn was just like something I've never seen before. You know, it was absolutely electric. And, uh, yeah, he got that. He got his bad injury, and uh, the Champions League was against was against Bayern Munich. He got the he got the injury. I, w- I wouldn't say he wasn't the same player, but he maybe had just lost that wee edge on that. He maybe not quite as maybe I wouldn't even say half a yard, even just a wee quarter of a yard mm-hmm. was just maybe not quite right with the with the seriousness of the injury. But what a, he was still like an absolutely phenomenal player, and you know I think if I think had he not got injured, then I don't think he would have been at Rangers long. I think the the big, big teams in England probably would have came calling for him. But uh, again, it was absolute privilege to work with him. And you're right, I looked at that turn and I worked on that. I worked on that tirelessly. Like, if for a young, I was 20, 21, 
Uh, and even like going, I remember, and I remember working in a warm up at a Scotland 21s game at Dunfermline. I think we were playing Croatia, maybe. And I was like just constantly going through it, going through it in a warm up. And I tried try to put that in my game, but that's what you do. As like you say, as a young player, you're a sponge, you know, you've got to look at them, not just things like that, but look at the daily habits of these, of these guys and, and how, they, how they conduct themselves on the training field, how they, again, even off the training field, in and about the club and, and the extra work that they put in, the time that they put on in their bodies and how they look after themselves. Is, uh, you have to do that as a young player, you know, but if you can take wee nuggets like that, and put it into your own game, son. It clearly works and causes, and he's had he had all kinds of success with it. It's uh, it's definitely something you look at. Yeah, you know, superb, mate. So obviously we're talking about how good the squad was at that time. The, the host of talent. Three, I think two years prior to that, we'd won a treble. <clears throat> the year before, we won a double. But that season, we weren't able to emulate the, the silver we won previously. Can you put that down to it? And think there was too much talent. Was it a fall? A cut about how? Why did that happen? Do you think? Not not a clue because all, all I could say, I mean, if you look at even what's happened this season, like Celtic are not a bad team. No. But we've just been better. You know, we've just been so much better. And it's always different when you're playing catch up, you know, and it's back then we had dropped points early. We dropped points early in the season where Celtic were pretty were pretty strong at the start. Again, the first old firm game that I actually missed, I got injured on the Friday before the game, was the 6-2 game at Parkhead. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, I, again, this is something I even said moving forward into the when I came back like the last time there, and we had a horrendous record in the old fun games. But there was far better teams than us had been had been beaten and beaten well in old fun games because sometimes these this just happens in games. Yeah, albeit it happened too often mm-hmm. over that over that wee two year spell, my last two year spell. But the next game, which was my first old fun game, we won five one. Yeah, so they yeah, turned yeah. them around. So there was two big turnarounds, you know, in, in, in the game. So we just seemed to like we, we, we got off. We, were, we had the squad. Obviously, the squad was was up there with any squad that I've, that I've played in. Probably the best I've played in in terms of names and, and and talent and ability. But we just never we just never really performed to the levels that year. I think we, we had a a couple of games, really poor results, even at home. I think Kamarnik was a was a two or a three 0 defeat. I think Super Ali was actually playing in that game for for Kilmarnock that day. And I think it was a it might have been a three 0 defeat uh, in that game. And you just think, I remember a few things kicked off after that game, and you will move on to things moving further on down the line on this, and how things actually kick off and what happens and what doesn't happen. But over that time, the amount of things that went on in our dressing room was was phenomenal because the standards were that high. And there was that many winners and characters in the dressing room that when things never went well, there was always an autopsy. There yeah. was always somebody who had something to say and, it's, and it wasn't pointing the finger or whatever, but it was, how, how was this happening to us, you know? And there was always some kind of different views or opinions on why. And it more than normally led to a, a kind of dust up, you know, over, over that over that period to, to work out why. And, it, and the, ultimately coming back to at this football club, that's not good enough. That is not accepted. These types of results and performances are not accepted. And that was uh, definitely happened a few times over the course of that season. And again, because of where we were at and what we found ourselves playing catch up. And, and we're well back in the league that year as well. Like it was one of them where it was, like it might not have been done till later on in April or whatever it was, but we were always playing catch up and it was always going to be hard to, it was always going to be hard to claw it back. Again, when you get to the stage where you're thinking, right, there's 13 games to go and we need to win 13 games and that might not even win yet. You know, yeah. you're, you're getting to the, you're getting to a, a situation where you're finding yourself too far back. Uh, I think the cup was a cup final that year we lost as well uh, to Celtic. I think what it was, was a cup semi. semi. Cup semi. semi we lost to, lost to Celtic as well which obviously was uh, was disappointing but like you say just a disappointing year I mean I, I went to the club to win things as well you know I, that's why I, as a player you go to you go to these big clubs to, to be successful win leagues win trophies so to come away for that empty handed that year and obviously end up leaving like, the following year like there's no doubt when I did go back eventually I, I did feel there was unfinished business and it's something that I wanted to go and, and obviously win silverware at that club so it takes on nicely the fact that he did leave the club, I think. Your sort of ch- uh, chances the team became limited a wee bit. So did that make it a kind of easy decision for you? Was it one that suited both you and the club at the time? Or how did that come about? Well, I never had any any aspirations of leaving because I remember coming back pre-season that year and, and Dick had said to me, the, 
that I came back in great nick. It's something I've always done, to be honest. I've, when I've went away pre-season, I've normally always put the work in close season to make sure I come back ready uh, like to attack pre-season. And I came back in good nick. And Dick had actually says to me that I was probably ahead of some of the older guys. So you're Boers and you're Michael Moses. And I was actually probably ahead of them in the pecking order. I think I scored quite a few goals in the pre-season games as well. So uh, we signed Kenija that year as well. So there was another forward player he had to the list, as well as Russell Lappy, a player who had played with Hibs that I knew really well. Uh, so again, two wonderful attacking options for us. Uh, and again, another just two guys for me to compete with. But I'd like to say I came back, I started pretty well. First game of the season, we were away at Pataudry and we were getting beaten now. I think it was now now actually in the... When I came on for the last 20 minutes, uh, half an hour, we won 3-0 and I pretty much had a hand in all the goals. Mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd made an impact in the game as, as a sub. And then the following week, I wasn't even in 18 or 16 or 14, whatever it was back then. I'm not sure, but I was in the stand anyway. I remember that. <laughs> so it was, it was a bit disappointing. It was a bit disappointing to say at least, considering I'd, I'd, I'd had a good pre-season. I'd, start, I'd, played the, I'd came on in the first league game and, and made an impact. And it was a big win, as you know, what the games up at Pataudry are like, particularly the opening game of the season. It was a, a big occasion. We won 3-0 and I played my part in that. So it was disappointing not to be involved in the next week. I think after that, we actually went, we were away on international duty. I was away with the 21s. And as I was on the way back, my agent was Gordon Smith at the time and he was on the trip. Right. And he, he came to me all just before we were flying back to say, look, he's... They said a chat with Rose and they would be keen to take me along. This is again, this is something that I hadn't been looking for. Mm-hmm. This was just one of these things that was an option that was put in front of me. There, and I thought, okay, well, uh, how do we look at it? again? Never knew too much about rules at the time. How do we look at it? I thought, okay, they're a big, big club playing at a good level. Uh, if if the club are in, if the club are agreeing to it, then obviously maybe no see me as part of the Nice. As part of the playing group moving forward, uh, or as much as I would like anyway, which that's that's ultimately what it was. I went and seen Dick the next day, and he says, "Look, it's, if you want to do it, like, we'll no stand your way." Obviously, competition is fierce. Yeah. Uh, so that was that's enough for me. Robbie, I've always been someone. If I'm not playing, I've always just wanted to play. I'm not going to sit about and pick my money up. It's no, I've I've no, I've always wanted to play. Hence, that's why I, I end up playing. I don't know, almost 900 games over the, like for club and country over the course of my career. So. If I wasn't getting a game, then I wanted to move on to somewhere where I was going to get a game. So went on loan initially and then injured my collarbone. I stuck, was on the bench the first two games for Wolves. Started the next three, scored two. And in the third game, I got injured, broke my collarbone. So I was back up the road, uh, got the operation back up in Glasgow, done a bit of the rehab in, uh, in Murray Park. I just opened that year. Mm-hmm. To and whilst I was injured, I was always I was in contact with Rose, and they said they wanted to sign me. They wanted to make it a they wanted to make it a permanent move. And the story the story goes that they accepted a three million pound bid, uh, which I thought, yep, yeah, okay, that's fair enough. If that's been kind of accepted, then I'll go. And the chairman phoned me to say, look, we're changing the manager. So it was obviously the changeover manager. Maybe just wait. Let's just wait. We'll know. We'll not accept it yet. Let's just wait to see what the new manager does. Uh, so when he said that, I knew it was going to be Alex. Obviously, it had been it had been rumored that he was coming in and he was, he was doing a fantastic job at, at Hibs. So he was going to be getting the job. So I thought, right, okay. He kind of gave me my, my breakthrough at Rangers and maybe. And I think the chairman even thought, right, that he would uh, he would probably maybe want to keep me around because they obviously our previous working relationship. So the next day, Alex McLeish is in and chairman phoned me and told me I could go. So, so <laughs> <laughs> didn't fancy. <laughs> he didn't fancy me. He didn't want to keep me. So uh, it was uh, so that was me. That was good enough for me. So we'd be calling Cameron actually had just signed for Wolves right. from Harps at the same time. So he'd been away with the full squad. I was uh, away with the 21. So the next day, uh, the next kind of day, the two, I think it was the, so that was the Wednesday night we were back. The Thursday I went to see Dick. The Friday we drove down to uh, we drove down to Wolves, or the Thursday night actually, we drove down to Wolves together and uh, that was that. So I actually never got a chance to see anybody uh, before I went on, before I went on, well, sorry, before I actually moved. But uh, we were sitting, I think we were playing a Barnsley away one night at Wolves, Tuesday night, or sitting on the Monday night, we were in a hotel. And Alex actually phoned me, but it was about four, four six weeks after uh, after I came in. I didn't need them. Oh, well, listen, I never knew the number. It was a Whitfield number. I never knew who it was. So I'm picked up. He's like, ah, oh, Kenny, it's Gaffer. It's Gaffer. I'm thinking, who, who's Gaffer? It's Alex. Alex McLeish. 
I went, oh, Gaffer, oh, how you doing? I went, oh, listen, sorry, and I've got a chance to speak to you. But listen, it was all the players we've got, and it was a concrete offer on the table. To fucking, they, they, they too good to turn down, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I said, listen, I went, you'll send me back. You'll try and send me back in a few years, which, sure enough, he did, and then never happened. And then a few years later, obviously, I got the chance to come back. So it's, uh, right, so he got rid of me on, my, on his first day in the job. It's funny how football works, isn't it? But uh, obviously, you go to Wolves and try and keep this Rangers right as possible. But I can't even brush over the fact that you scored in the, the final, the playoff, the playoff final. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. Was I? Well, we were 3-0. We were 3 0 up at half time. I scored just right before half time to make it 3 0. So it was, uh, we were almost there at half time. So I, it was good. It was like, listen, I had five years there. It was five years. Uh, brilliant times, good mates. Got to play in the Premier League. Uh, had a couple of good moments in that year as well. Winner against Man United. Three days later, a last minute equaliser against Liverpool. Uh, some great memories, you know, like real good times over that spell. And it, see that that playoff final was that that was the old Wembley? Or was that the new? Well, Wembley? that was at the Millennium. We had it at the Millennium. Oh, was it? Oh, I, I was, was thinking if that was the old Wembley, that they meant you yeah. scored at the old and the new. Yeah. I was trying to get a good start there, <laughs> but nah, never. Yeah. So anyway, obviously. Rejoined the club and well before that time you moved to about a couple of clubs, took a bump in the heat somewhere and went somewhere for a year, but we'll, we'll forgive you for that. Uh, so you re-signed with the club in 2008, and I remember that summer that the speculation around you coming. And listen, it's not would be remiss of me not to mention there was a lot of negative speculation in terms of the support. So I can only imagine it. I think as football fans, we forget that not every decision a footballer makes is football related. So given the fact that there was a wee bit of negativity with the support. You know, if you signed, there would have been fans on both sides not too happy with it. How much does that play on your decision? How much does that play in your mind when you made a decision? Again, for me, it never, it never ever played any any part in it for me because I've always believed that no matter where I've been, I've, I've gave everything I've got for, for the for the club that I represented, and it's, it's as simple as that. But the fact that it was coming back for Walter, because had it not been Walter, I probably would never have got that chance. Mm-hmm. You know, but he had worked with me with the, with the national team. Uh, obviously, Ali was assistant manager of the national team as well with Tommy Burns. And uh, he, he knew what I was going to be bringing uh, to the team. Uh, again, I'd built a, a really good working relationship with, with both Walter and Ali over the, over the international time. So I always knew his standing at the football club and always believed that the majority probably would have trusted him because he knows what he's doing. I think that goes with it saying that Walter knows what he's doing. So that was that was that made it easier. I think if it had it been for somebody else, one, it might not, I might not have got that chance, but two, had it been for somebody else, it might have been harder. But the fact that it was coming back for, for Walter and Ali and the standing that they both have got at the football club was made it a little bit easier for me. But I always believed that I've always believed in my own abilities. Uh that, that I could do my job and I could do it well and always believed that that would, that would ultimately maybe win, win the fans back over. Yeah. So talk about winning the fans back over, obviously, if I remember right, I don't think you scored your first four or five games, but the game you did break your duck. First old family to see. Saved it. Saved it for that one from Roy. What's that? <laughs> I, saved <them. laughs> I saved it for that one. Aye. So first one of the season, you scored two, uh, part of Ted, four two, when I was sent you off there. That was the first time that I'd seen us win at Parkhead, so I thank you for that one. Just did that, did you feel as though that was your sort of definitive moment to win those fans over? And just how did it feel like scoring the two in that day? Listen, it feels incredible to score in any old firm game, but if, if, if ever I felt any type of pressure, which again, it's something I, you always feel a wee bit nervous going into games, but in terms of pressure, I've, I've always somebody who's kind of focused on like, the job, like the roles and the responsibilities that I've got within a team. I've always focused on that rather than what, a certain occasion was or what a game was going to bring but that game in particular I probably did feel a little bit because I felt it was an opportunity if we got the first leg we need to win Yeah, uh, that, that's the first thing but if I could put in a performance in it and, and get a goal or as it turned out a couple of goals in the game it's, I mean these games can make a break an old firm player you know you look at look at all the goals that Alfredo scored over the, over the last three or four seasons and it's been an incredible amount of goals but that that duck, that monkey was on his back uh, until the until the game there at one one they, they, they eventually broke it. So these games can can make a break an old from player. So to get my first goals back in a Rangers jersey in that game at Parkhead and a four two one, 
Like, I, I think it would have. Listen, there will always be people that were, again, they just don't think you're good enough to play for the team or despite what, I'd, irrespective of where I had played or, or what had happened before, there are always players that maybe just, a team, uh, sorry, fans that just don't think you're good enough. Uh, but I think that would have went a long way to kind of getting accepted back into the, into the Rangers kind of families. Eyes uh, because it was it's a huge game, you know. It's a huge game. Any time there's an old form, this game at the weekend there'll be a huge old form game. Even though, even though there's no too much on it, there's always things on an old form game. So yeah. to, to be the first one of the season, my first one back in, in Rangers colours, and and to get a couple of goals and a four two win, not just a win. Actually, the performance was incredible that day. Yeah. Like it was, we're four one up again. The four two kind of makes the scoreline look a little bit more respectable, but it was a it was a bit of a doing. Like, uh, because like I was unreal that day. If I remember right, obviously he gets sent off, but it was brilliant before that. His, his goal was incredible. You yeah. know, like it's one of them where again, what would just seem to kind of have have the knacky just getting things right because before the game. I think Daniel was actually on the very... He moved, didn't he? Move right after that game. I'm Aye. sure he moved. I'll tell you, I can still remember the date. It was August the 31st. Yeah. The game was on August the 31st and I'm sure Daniel moved the next day. <laughs> or the next couple of days. I'm sure he moved to Hull. I'm yeah. sure he moved to Hull within the coming days. I thought, so, well, I, nobody kind of thought that he would play, but Walter thought, no, no, he's, he's playing. He's, he's, and he, like, it, like it was, I remember when the team was picked, it was... So oh, he's playing Daniel, he's, he's picking Daniel. Even though Daniel was a really, really good player, I just think there was things surrounding him at that time. And he just threw, he threw him into the game. Like you say, he was unplayable. Right. His goal was phenomenal. Like he was literally holding Mark Wilson on his back while players right. running towards goal. Well, half the pitch. Pace, pace, power, and an incredible finish for a tight angle. I could see just this is kind of top of you, but that, that is something that Walter's always done because he even think of the fact that he used to always bring like Charlie Adam in and right mid and stuff. I think see, see, yep. see that day, where was Kuzan playing? Because no often did we play with two up front and old firm. Did they do it that day? I can't remember. Aye. Aye. He did, aye. We, we played two up front. Uh, we played two up front. Obviously, myself and Daniel were up front. But he done, like you say, he had, he had the knack of doing things. Always remember he, Stevie Smith sometimes found himself playing left midfield in these games as well. Or, or, or Charlie, was, obviously there was a banner that Charlie always just used to get wheeled out for the old fun games. Like, he'd never played any other game, but he would come at, he would come at the old fun game. So, he had the night. listen, he, he just knew how to win. He, he knew how to get a team on that field that could manage the game. But ultimately, it was a, a team that was going to probably have the best chance of getting the result in that game. Aye, well, listen, I'm a huge fan of Walter. We'll touch on him a wee bit later. But obviously... So we get through that season, a uh, successful season for us. I think we won the Scottish Cup, which funny enough, is the last time we've done it, uh, that uh, day against Falkirk. But we win the league on the last day of the season. I waited done the United 3-0. So to go through that full season, obviously it's going to be a difficult one, but to win it so emphatically in the last day, what's your, your memories of that? Well, it was... I remember going into the... going into the last... the split, I'm sure we were like five or six points back at that point. We were, we were a wee bit back because I remember going to the last old fun game uh, at Ibrox. We needed to win. You know, there was no other result was, was, going, to be, was going to be good enough to, like, to get us back in there. I think a draw would have, would have, would have done them because it would have kept them that distance between us. So we needed to win. And I had, I think that season, I had actually not been, I never played the three or four games leading into the old fun game because Andrew, Andreas Velichka had came to the club and he was on an inc- he just never he couldn't stop scoring if you remember well, the, he scored the first day of the season as well I think like against Falk or something like that it was, I did he scored the winner he scored yeah. the winner in that game uh, but he, he went through this wee run of games just run about March and April time that he just couldn't stop scoring I'm sitting on the bench like this what because I think I did a wee injury I'm sitting thinking oh what's going on here he just can't he can't stop scoring yeah. and it was like he wouldn't be in the game he might not be having a great game and then boom goal boom goal he was just <laughs> scoring for fun so listen you, you have to sit and just and just bide your time at that moment but the old fun game is coming up and I remember I'm okay I've knocked Walter's door like the, after after the four. Did you games. actually? Did you see him? Absolutely, I did. Yep, I went and I went and knocked that, his door. But it wasn't a, it wasn't a little meeting, by the way. So <laughs> I went and I had, his, his office was actually the downstairs office in uh, in Murray Park at the time. Uh, so I went and I've knocked the door and I went, Gaffer, you got a minute? He went, aye, and you come. Saturday, he went, you're playing Saturday. I went, no problem. <laughs> straight, <laughs> straight back. Because <laughs> he obviously I knew he knew. Him. He said something wrong. Huh? That was it. Never, he never even waited till I started speaking. Oh, you're playing on Saturday. I went, okay, no problem. It's good enough for me. And I just went to the office. But 
he obviously knew what was coming. Again, that's 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 good coaching, good management. You're prepared for these types of things with players. You know, you you've got 20, 25 guys that you've got to be looking after them all. You've got to know what they're thinking. So he obviously knew I'm can sitting on the bench. There's an old firm game coming, and I'm raging. I'm sitting on the bench. So I went and knocked his door, and before I even had a word say, I told me I was playing at the weekend. So that was me up and back out in the shower. And that was a was that one 0 Steve Davis? Was that one 0 Steve Davis. So me and Boyd had a wee link up. I went down and I kind of put a decent wee decent wee assist for that one. Yeah. Yep. So and it was a huge result, huge result for us because that got us now that got us back believing that right we're right back in this now. And if they slip up, we uh, we're going to have a we're going to have a right chance. And I'm sure we actually drew against Hibs and they they scored a goal late on Hibs. Uh, I think it was a two-two game at Easter Road, and that kind of that gave them the edge again. But then that midweek, I think they went to Easter Road and drew as well, which then gave us the opportunity going into the last game of the season. As long as we got a draw, mm-hmm. it was it was That's enough right. for the enough for the league. And again, we're two 0 up at half time. Big boy, he scores the third just after half time, and it's happy days. It's party time. Absolutely, mate. So then we go into the next season, uh, the 0-9-10 season, and I think around about this time there was sort of whispers about the potential sort of financial troubles we would go through. And I think that was made evident by the fact that a lot of players had left within that. I think Barry Ferguson had left, Pedro Mendes left, and then we made no permanent signings. I think we signed Jerome Roth in that season on a six-month loan deal, but we didn't made no permanent signings. So given that the season before we'd only won the league in the last game of the season, we've now made no permanent signings. What was the feeling in the squad show? There was a wee bit of debate as to whether or not you could emulate, uh, uh, emulate the success we've seen before. But, no, we had, a, we had an incredible group. You know, like, like that group of players was, I mean, like we talked about the first group that I worked with and the talents were, were phenomenal, but the that, that group for me was a better group. Right. It was a better, it was a better dressing room. I thought. Now again, I might be only been because I was a bit older now, and uh, and I was only a young lad at the first time, and I was kind of probably quiet in the dressing room uh, because of the amount of kind of players and just came. Surprising that, by the way. Yeah. Well, well we <laughs> actually quite all right. We'll say quieter. Uh, <laughs> but coming back, I was more established. I was I was an international footballer who had who had a number of caps. I'd been in England for a, a while as well, played at a good level. So I was coming back in a different. A different time in my career, so I just felt that dress with David Weir, Fergie. Obviously, you say Fergie had left, but he's still you've got guys like Big Jag had been at the club a while, Boyd, Nasey, uh, Quicks was a really, really good player to play with as well. Really good player, Magic Begera had came in that year as well, and him and Big Davy formed a brilliant partnership. Again, the unsung hero who, again, cult hero, I suppose, Sasser. Sasser was so, so consistent and always there, never injured, just went about his business. Uh, he barely said a word to anybody, <laughs> just, uh, just got home with his job. But he was a really, really good player. Dave O, wonderful footballer. You're still seeing that now, his performances in the team now. So we had a, we had a strong group, you know, with a real strong group of players. And it was like you, you were aware of it because I think it was signed Jelovic the following season. I think that was the first signing that we had made in kind of two seasons since the summer that I came. Yeah. So it was me, Pedro, Devo signed permanently after his loan deal. Uh, big Kyle Lafferty had came at the club. Yeah. We all came the same summer. And then it kind of went two two years without us signing that, that, that permanent signing again. So I right, listen, you were kind of aware of it, but we were confident in the group. You know, the, the group was strong. We had uh, not just a starting 11, we had probably. 16, 17 boys that were all probably expecting to play. So the, so the squad was still strong. But you're right, any, at the end of any season, you always look for a wee bit of freshness and you'll maybe isolate a, a, a position or two where you maybe feel you can strengthen. Yeah. But uh, obviously we were looking at more like loan signings or anything at, at that point. But listen, we, we went on and that was the, we actually won the league by a lot further that year. It was, it was brilliant year again, another good another good. Uh, Day one in at Easter Road, but we won it. We won it with a canter that year. Yeah. So similar to the season before, first old fun game, you scored two. The, the memory I've got for that is Chris Boyd Tatty flick on for your second, and I think you still Tatty come come back to him for that jump he made it about five yards too early. Him and Griggs are still fighting over the assist. <laughs> that's <laughs> a, that's <laughs> the problem. Definitely no Boyd but, anyway. Yeah, but uh, it's a no, but he assisted the first one with a toe poke, aye, a left foot toe poke right through the middle. But uh, no, again, listen, it was the first old firm game. Everybody's up for it. 
uh, at Ibrox. Incredible atmosphere again, and that's the one thing I've missed this year about the games and yeah. things have been going really, really well for the team, obviously. But when we throw no fans there, it's not the same. Yeah. But those games, like this, and they're incredible games, you know. Always loved them. The first old fun fun game of the season, over that three years, I, I made my own. I think we're getting doubles in each of them. Uh, we won, we won every one as well, which was good. So yeah, we're two 0 up after thirteen minutes, I think it was. Yeah. So it was. Uh, Brilliant start to a game, so it was uh, again two goals. Maybe a wee bit of luck with the second one. Maybe a wee bit of luck with the first one. Maybe a wee bit of luck with the first one as well. I think I hit that off the old shin, hit my shin guard and went in the first one and crawled over the line. But I think, was, uh, I think Arthur Boric thought the goal was about five yards arse. So he's standing on one post. He was expecting it to be pinged. I thought, no, no, I'm slow balling this. I'm going to slow ball this in the side of it. So it was uh, a huge result again. Good start, first first old fun game of the season. You always want to win that one, get yourself set up for the season. So it was a uh, yeah, another two goals, good win. We had to kind of hang on a wee bit. We obviously uh, we concede the penalty, but it was uh, no well well fought win that day. But I think the most memorable goal for you and most memorable game certainly in my opinion was the, the cup final that year. Just talk us through how how does a team in a cup final? Just for I'm sure everybody does know the history behind it, but I'll go through it anyway. No, no, at half time, we get a man sent off, I think about 60 minutes, then an R man sent off 70 minutes. How at that point? I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought Tomo was sent off in the first half. I, I think it was the second, but it wasn't a long into the second. It might have been 50, 60 minutes, I want to check, but regardless, yeah. anyway, it would have been nine men with 20 minutes to go and we're still going winning win a game. How does that happen? Like, you know, again, but that's what I'm saying about that group. That group was just littered with winners mm. and guys that are willing to just to go that extra mile. And we know coaching now and this is what you're kind of talking to players about that trying to get them to understand what what it takes the sacrifices you need to make how you need to go these extra miles to to win any game of football never mind a cup final when you're doing to nine men you have to work hard and you have to you have to go that extra mile extra yards to to win any game whether it be 11 v 11 10 v 11 but again with nine men that group just it just found a way to win you know and it's one again it's, it's the stories go by that it was Walter would let Ali kind of pick the team, and he would let him and him and him and Koji, McD- Koji McDowell kind of take the team for the for, for the cup games. But that day, he was right I think it was half time. He was right down, and he was he was on the touch lines. And you know, there's no doubt he, he had he played his part because he was absolutely demanding. He was shouting. He was barking at instructions, moving players to this position to that position again. I said it many a time. I think I might have played three or four positions that day. I think I might have played three or four positions in the one move. <laughs> so you're back helping out, back helping out defending, trying to stop a goal, and then when you make a breakaway, I mean, I'm, I, I watched myself look, looking at that, and I thought, what, I'm thinking, I was 28, 29 at that time, trying to run forward. That must have, the effort to just drive the knees forward that day was hard enough. So, uh, but again, it's a funny one because St Mirren were actually the better team than us in the first half because I remember at half time of that game, I was fucking, I was going off my head because we were just we were so so bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I felt we had no, we had no reach to our, our prefer game. Walter came in when I was kind of mid rant a wee bit and told me to shut the fuck up right. and sit down. So bang straight on Mars and listen. So it was a, uh, it was one of them where we just, we just hadn't hit. It was a similar to the, the Falkirk as well. We were rubbish, right. rubbish in the game right. against right. Falkirk. We took that goal for Nacho just after half time, like to win the game. But we just, we just found a way. You know, there was a real belief and a spirit within the, within the boys that we could still get the job done. Uh, but then I felt I think they smelled blood and they thought oh they're doing nine men now for the first time in the game the only time potentially they actually had overcommitted because when we're breaking forward we were actually a bit of a 3v2 going mm-hmm. forward but then trying to get back and, and they were just as, they were just as tired as us mm-hmm. so they were trying to get back and sure enough the big baby wheel steps out of the first the back, you think the back four, the big man steps out, sprays it out to Nasey, who carries the ball unopposed, yeah, 50, 60 yards, which again is phenomenal considering they've got 11 men and we've got nine. Uh, he strides forward and I just I just wanted to get in the middle of the box and sure enough, Nasey put a ball right on the money, managed to plant a header right at the bottom corner. I think the bounce just helped beat, beat uh, Paul, I think it was Paul Gallagher that was in the goal at the time and uh, it was just a, that's, listen, it was just a perfect error, I couldn't have caught it any better. Listen, no saying I meant it, it just, Hit off the corner and went right in the right into the bottom corner. You know, I can still I still get the feeling now when you're jumping the uh, jumping the hordings at Hamden and just shaking the fence right in front of the right in front of the fans. And it's it's funny because I put that goal up on my Instagram a couple of times. 
Right. And there's a guy who always messages you says, that's me, Kenny, the Joker hat. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the Joker hat in the corner in the stand. And it's uh, Andy Halliday's name, I think it was, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's somebody always oh, asked me in the joke on that yeah, kind of thing. You were up the back that day. Yeah. You were up the back. <laughs> so it's saying, oh, amazing memories. I say, still look back at it. What a feeling because it's it's phenomenal. Nine men, you know. But again, that just kind of it just summed that team up. This, the, the belief, the the spirit within the team to get like, to get the job done. But again, Walter, he, he, he knew how a team to set a team up. Even at that stage, it was still it was still changing things and pushing people into a position just to fill gaps, to make it hard, to then obviously give yourself a chance to nick it. And that's what we've done. So see just own water, right? I'm a huge, huge fan of the guy. Always I think I speak for the majority of the sport when I say that. What kind of manager was he? Because you hear a lot of people who say, like, oh, he's a great man manager, but surely he must have been pretty astute tactically as well to, to be that successful. You think the days like that, like, any, see, see if I'm on the side, we go down to nine men. I'm, I'm trying to count my fingers to say, what even formation do you play? So he's able to think in that high pressured moment and create a situation where we want to win a game so how would you like define him as a manager I think he was an incredible man manager firstly yeah. uh, and the first again the first signs I've seen that was, was with the Scotland team so he came in after Betty Volks where we were on our arse nice. to be honest with the team uh, it was in a real real low moment but instantly absolutely instantly it got an effect and I was speaking with Gary Caldwell about it the other week there Mm-hmm. And we started you know, just kind of reminiscing a wee bit of what went. And I think his first, his, I think he had an opportunity to take a game. It might have been in the February International, and he never took a game, but he, t- he got us a get together. I think it was in a hotel down in Manchester somewhere. And he just was done training. And his first meeting, he just, he, he just had the group. You know, he had the group in the palm of his hand. And when you've got players in an international setup where everybody's probably playing for the clubs. Mm-hmm. So everybody, that's why they're getting the chance to come and play for them for their national team. So everybody fancies themselves to play. Yeah. And there's always people that are unhappy if they're not playing. That's just that goes with that's just football, club or country. But he just seemed to get over that. Everybody, whether they were playing or no playing, seemed to be buying into what he done. So that man management side at first time, you never had the, 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 the wee gripes and the groans that had potentially we had had before. And by the way, even after. Times I've seen it, he just seemed to have this knacky. You know what it was? I think he had an aura, right? He's got an aura about him. And instantly, you say respect's earned, and it is, but he just had this respect. He just, the players just respected him, and you would never cross him. You were, I think it was, I remember one trip, I think it was Boyd and Nigel Quasi needed shoes <laughs> for the suit. So on a Friday afternoon, they had decided the day before the game to go into, into town, into a cruise, or into whatever it is to get a pair of shoes. And Walter had found out about it and he, he pulls him up and he, you know, he doesn't need to say too many, he just needs to give you a look. He's there. He pulled him up, he, he just, the he eyebrows. He pulled, he pulled him up into the meeting and saying, who's went into town for shoes or fucking whatever? And fucking you like Boyd, he's fucking <laughs> quasi sitting ripping and he's went, boy, fucking quasi. And he's, he's nailed, listen, never again. You would never cross him ever again. So he had this respect, he had this aura. So the man management side was always there. But tactically... It was it was incredible as well. Was, was to get to get us to where we were mm-hmm. pretty instantly to, to being at a different level. Like we went through the rankings under Walter initially, and then when he left obviously to go back to Rangers, Alex took over and he pretty much continued the work as well. And I think we reached this high thirteenth in the world over that, over that time. And obviously we beat France home and away under under Alex. Uh, it was just a, a real good time for the national team without actually making it obviously to the finals. But so tactically, it, 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 you can't do that if, if you're not absolutely nailed on with what you want and ha- able to get. And again, because they had the respect to the team, it was uh, it, boys just wanted to like to carry out. The boys wanted to run through a brick wall for them. That was the man management and the tactical side. But a wee thing that they noticed in games, like so, forget the cup final and he's pushing people here, there, and everywhere to get the result. That old fun game at Parkhead, the first one, the 4-2. 4-2. We're in at half-time and it was 1-1. So at half-time, he's going through, right, this is what we need to do. We can, we can write in it. We can go win this, no problem. We've done well, whatever. And he just says, by the way, boys, Davo, look to the edge of the box. Look to the edge it's of the box. Over corner. Just look to the edge of the box because they're bare. They're bare arsed at the edge of the box. By the way, Davo still needs to hit the pass to on the Aye, money. Davo still... Pedro still needs to hit it like an absolute arrow into the corner. 
But it's just these wee things. They just they seen things in games. So whether it be like I've said, changing a, a, a positions, changing a wee a wee a wee tweak to a formation, or even a wee nugget just to say, look, keep your eyes out for that. He said that before at half time of the game. He just says, look for if you get a corner, look to the edge of the box. Sure so that they were there. So that goal was never worked on or anything like that. That was just him saying that. No, it wasn't worked on. He just said he had noticed it in game. Maybe he just noticed that they were bare arsed at the edge of the box. We went in, Pedro's free, bang, the rest history, 3 1, game over. So, so it could be things like that. So he, he could see things in game, leading into games, he knew how to set the team up to give them the best chance of winning. So again, man management can only take you so far. Yeah. You, you, you need to you need to have that that tactical mouse to actually get advantages within games. So and again, it might be prior to a game working on things, or it might be uh, it might be in game, something like that. But what I would say is we always did have top players. Yeah. And when top players are playing together, things seem to happen. But when it, when it mattered most, when you're coming up against top teams in the Champions League, an old firm game, or like any international games we had, what were we put the work in on the on the on, on the training ground to make sure we were ready and prepped to, to go and have the best possible chance to win that game? Yeah, I'd, I'd I thought that had to be the case, given the fact that we were able to get the FA Cup final. Obviously, a large part of that was how we set up. Yeah. So it had to be good at it. Uh, but it's, obviously, we've done that the, the previous two years, but. You could almost say the sort of failing of that, that squad around about that time was how we performed in Europe the, those two years. So I think your first games were the game in Lithuania against Kaunas. Yeah. And then obviously <laughs> that season we had a pretty poor Champions League uh, group stage. I think it was Stuttgart, Seville and Gunnery. I think it was that season. Okay. So what, what do you think that was about? Do you think it was maybe this, because we were up on a squad, smaller squad, we were too stretched? Or what, what do you think that was? No, listen, it's, listen, it's just Champions League football, Robbie. You know, so ultimately, it's either if you're talking about at that year where you're, you're no signing any players. So, yeah, yeah listen, I don't think we're a particularly small squad, mm. but it's a squad that obviously wasn't strengthened. So, again, we would set, we would set our team up again in a way probably not to get beat. Yeah. To try and be defensively sound. Again, if the year after we look at we went to Old Trafford, you've got a 0-0. Uh, it took a dubious penalty, I would say, at Ibrox for them to actually beat us as well. Uh Valencia so, had, really good, they had a good side that year. Good teams, you know, really good teams. There's no teams now, again, even you look at the Champions League now, like this, there's no easy games, you know, there's no easy games, particularly when you're not, it's not as if you're a, a superpower, you know, you're you're in there in the mix trying to fight with the rest of them, so you're up against top players, but again, it was still disappointing, particularly that, particularly that year, the Unirea one, because we got beat at home uh, 4-1, but again, in all the goals, there was, what was it, three deflected goals on the final. It was, it was incredible, you know, like every time they seemed to shoot, it seemed to hit one of their players and go the other way. And you're like, what on earth is going on here? Right. So that obviously that never helped. And it was, uh, I, listen, it was a really poor year. Like, there's no excuses for it because in those games, like, we, we should have been more competitive in that group. Yeah. Uh, the following year, I wouldn't have said as much because it was hard group, you know, so it, was, it was a tough, tough group. But the, the one that year, I think we, we probably could have done a little bit better in that game. But, you know, it's, you would, as much as they're disappointing, I think they are bonus. It's bonus games, you know. If we, if we could, even if we had got to this, the last sixteen of that one, it still would have been a, still would have been a fair achievement coming out of that group because you're saying oh, Stuttgart's and Unirea's and uh, so, uh, it's of all. I mean, they're tough, tough games. You know, tough games, particularly away from home. They're always going to be tough games. So to get anything at that level, you need to really get your home game sorted. So when we had got beat by Unirea, that that was a that was a real body blow for us in terms of trying to qualify. Aye. So I think obviously touched on the, the cup final. I think we built the momentum after that, able to get that league up with four games to go. So that's obviously quite relevant to what's happened this season. And after that, you played in a quote-unquote meaningless old firm. You scored in it, but we lost 2-1. So it's just a case of we're going into the game at the weekend. Do you feel as though there is such a thing as a meaningless old firm or is there still that sort of underlying psychological element to it? Well, speaking before the Cup uh, the cup semi, it's a, cup, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Cup game a couple of weeks ago, it's a Scottish Cup game that we want to win. Yeah. It's their only chance of now getting silverware. So it was a huge, huge game. For both teams, for both these again, even management at Celtic, what's going on there? Is that a chance for, for, for John Kennedy to maybe get the job? It's also a chance for obviously Stephen Gerrard to get a double. So it was a huge game. This this time, we've now got the opportunity to go through the season unbeaten yeah. against Celtic. Unbeaten in the league. So there's still a lot on it. Celtic's, Celtic's carrot is 
can they stop Rangers for doing that? You know, so there's, there's never, there never is. I mean, again, you talk about that game in that season, like we had won the league, it was it was all over. Uh, but it was a chance for them to salvage a wee bit of pride. Yeah. And I, and I can tell you for fact, in that dressing room, there was, in our dressing room, there was absolutely no one taking it lightly. No, no. You know, and it was actually incredible that night. We, we actually were phenomenal that night. Yeah, I can't believe it. We, Absolutely. I remember the first half, some of the stuff we played was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Absolutely unbelievable that night. Uh, but again, we lost the game. There's, whether, we, whether the league had been done or not done, our dressing room was the same after the game. Oh, but still, still got it. Still disappointed we've lost that game because they've always, they've always been something. Yep, the league's done. Uh, there's no a league place and or anything really at stake in that sense. But there is, there's an unbeaten season to keep going. There's an unbeaten season against Celtic, obviously, to keep going. Celtic will have the opportunity to stop that. So I'm sure that will be their carrot as well. Aye. So obviously, going to a new season, it's a new season, but a similar part emerges. You score in the, the first old firm, it was the, you scored two actually, the 3 1 game at Parkhead. So I'm just interested to know, so that's three years on the trot you've scored in the first half of the season. What's your, obviously we spoke earlier, you, you seem to have quite a strong mindset mentality. Do you have a different mindset going into old firm games? Or is it is, is the reason you do so well you treat it like any other? Or is the reason you do so well you, you've got a different mindset altogether? No, I'll have the same mindset going into the games. But I love them. I absolutely love the games. I, I've, again, I went through a lot over the... The kind of two years kind of prior to leaving uh, 2016 to 18 there's a lot of talk surrounding like how can we close this gap how can we get the mentality back to where it was before and I've, I've said what we have needed and again McGregor's Davises were, are absolutely crucial to this is getting people who can go into these environments and these games and no just look forward to them and no just kind of, oh, I can handle, I can handle big game. Guys that go on it and thrive on it. Look, Alan McGregor, Alan McGregor just absolutely epitomises that. Mm-hmm. It, it, it comes up, it, 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 the saves he makes throughout a season are phenomenal. You know, it might get you between 10 and 15 points. Uh, even, a, even a top team in the country like Rangers, he'll still gain points and he'll play his part in winning that league. European, some of the saves, that European save for that header was just out, out of this world. And he, penalty saves, like how many big penalty saves is, is he going to have? He's, he's you done know, three against Celtic, is not he? Three it's, it's, and, this, and these are the kind of things. So for me, I loved it as well. You know, I, I loved the old firm atmosphere. I absolutely loved it. There was, it was a game you look forward to. I was never... Like, never scared to go and play in it. Never thinking, okay, well, if I don't do my job, I'm going to get hacked. No. And it's never, there was none of that, none of that thinking. It was, get in, go and be the best player on the pitch. Go and be the best player on the pitch in the game. Did you, did you find then, in your experience, there was players who maybe were really good, but, but couldn't handle that? Absolutely. Right. And there's, again, there's, the, the, you only need to go through time yeah. to actually see people that have, there's really, really good players that have maybe never ever lived up to the, to the fixture and not being able to handle it. Which again, like I said, sometimes these games can make or break you. Yeah. Uh, if, if you don't handle or if you have an off day or an off couple of games in, in these games like it'll never be forgotten you know these things will never get forgotten if you if you cost your team a game or you miss a big chance in the game it's uh, it's always it'll always get kind of regurgitated the next time the next one comes around so it was uh, there's 100% there'll be far better players than me that have played in this game that might not have quite performed at the level they would have expected to but uh, that said you need guys that can go and thrive on that atmosphere and are are willing to understand what it is, yeah. understand what it is, understand what it means, mm-hmm. uh, and can actually bring their A game when the, when the, when the first whistle goes. Aye. Well, I don't think there's any doubt you were able to do that. So, in that in that first six months, your goal record was unbelievable, if I remember right. So, would you say that between that six months and the previous year, that was the best 18 months of your career? Probably, aye. Mm-hmm. Probably, and again, I would even say even like, like that spell, like that that kind of two and a half, three year spell for me was was again it was it's no surprise it came on the water yeah. because I've always said he found so again another one of his abilities, his man management ability, he just seemed to get that extra out of people. For me, he got it, he got it, he got it extra. Like he, he found initially with Scotland, and I've told the story a million times before we played Austria one night in a friendly in August, uh, we're warming up. And I had his first game against Italy. 
in the San Siro. We got beat 2 0 to a Pirlo, two Pirlo free kicks. I missed a chance, went through, fucking scuffed my shot, brutal. Went through. No, were you scuffing it in enough? I know, it, was, it was pretty much like the Moritz when I get in the old firm, but this time Booth won saved it. So, uh, <laughs> uh, missed, so I missed, missed a chance, good chance. Uh, the next game is Mo- Belarus. We right. played Belarus away at the end of the season international. I go through, I zing one into the top, Dan Fletcher put one over the top, I've kind of had a volley, half volley into the top corner, keeper saved it, put it over the bar. I'm getting hammered again because I've missed, we do not know, hammered again for missing another chance. So before the August International, we're into the next season now. Training, Super Ali came up to me and goes, Kenny, you're looking sharp, you're looking right sharp, you're, you're a yard ahead of everybody, the way Ali would do, it'll make you feel good. I went, oh, cheers, Super, bro, I feel good, start the season well. He went, oh, no, you're doing great. And then Walter pulled me at the end of the session to see I was playing in a bit of a different role. I was playing a wee bit off Gary O'Connor that night. Right. I went, oh, no bother, boss. No bother, fine. He went, listen, he goes, since I've came in, you've been unbelievable for me. He goes, as long as you're performing to these levels, you'll always be the number nine in this team. And this was his third game in. And that's Walter Smith telling me this. And I thought, oof. I left that. And I hadn't scored in the first two games. I left that and I thought, fucking hell. I felt, felt 10 foot tall. I scored that night, the opener. The next game is Italy at home. Scored that, we drew 1-1. That was on the Saturday. On the Tuesday night, we were away in Norway. We won 2-1 and scored the two of them. And like, it was just, he just gave, he just, he, he found that extra 5, 10% in people. So that period working with him at club football, day in, day out, I was able to get to these levels. Listen, I'm, again, far from the best player that's ever played the game. But I, I, I believe I know I knew my role. Listen, had bad games. Everybody does. But over that period, for me, that was probably the most enjoyment and probably the best levels that I got to over the, over my career. See, see, just going back to Walter, like, see what he said to you. That seems to me something like a kind of standard thing for a manager to say. Would that have? See if somebody else had said that. See whatever manager. Would, see if it was better votes. See if he said that. Would it have had the same effect, or was it just something about him that made you believe it? No, I guess. And who knows? Who knows? But for me, he, he's honest because see, if he never felt it, he wouldn't say it. And that probably so helps. Th- th- there was the respect there that he was he was a straight shooter. Again, there was no no, no, no games with what he would tell you how it is. Again, he, he gave people umpteen people dressing yeah, downs, half times of games. He just again <laughs> the stair, the stairs the best. <laughs> the stairs the best. So that season, the start of that season, a sc- score a First, first, now, first time I've had the number nine Rangers on my back. Mm-hmm. It meant the world to me to have that. Boyd had just left. Yeah. Number nine. Got wee Jimmy. Wee Jimmy. Any chance of number nine, Jimmy? He's like, of <laughs> course, we're not getting the nine. Like, come on, wee man, come on. <laughs> like, that's it. So you have the number nine. Because by the way, Jimmy decided. No, the gaffer. Jimmy would decide. No chance. Would no would chance. <laughs> so, uh, is, uh, so that's it. All right, right. You know it. You know it. So absolutely buzzing. We've got number nine. So the first game of the season was, was it Kilmarnock? Was it Kilmarnock or St Johnston? Kilmarnock. Mm-hmm. It's Kilmarnock. There's a scrimmage. I think we only won one nil. There's a scrimmage. And it's a corner. It's dropped and it's cleared and it's dropped again. And somebody goes to clear it. And I've turned my back. And it's rattled off the number nine and flew into the back <laughs> of the goal. And that was my first goal. That was, that was 18, that's still going in. <laughs> if that was 18, it was hitting the wrong corner with the one and going into the corner of the corner flag. But I just thought there was there was a son. I just I just felt a big boy. I'm getting a bit of big boy. He's luck here. It's hit, it's hit my back. I've, not, I've never had a goal like that. It has asked, but it has asked. He's back. <laughs> so it's, uh, it went in there. Then the next game was Hibs away. Hat trick. Ah, yeah, see, uh, remember that. And then we had a we, had, we played Hamilton, but we had a Champions League game this week. So what was pulling me on the Friday or the Saturday morning? I might have been right. Listen, was, I'm, I'm resting you. For the, I went, fuck off, gaff. I went, fuck off. I've scored, I've scored a goal, I've scored a hat trick. I went, you, I went, I'm fucking, you want to play me? He's like, no, you're not playing. I went, I've got Champs League on thing, I'm dressed in your play. So we go, I think we went 1 0 up, I think Yelovich scored. I think, was, scored. I think that was his first goal. I think it was, I think he scored, but then they equalised. They equalised to make it 1 1. So there was like 15 to go. And he went, right, on, you're going on, you're going on. So I went, right, so I've scored the winner in the 90th minute. We went 2 1. So it was a bad, bad game, right? Rubbish game. So I've, I've got man of the match. I think it was on Sky. I've got man of the match. Come on for 50 minutes. So I'm away getting my champagne and that doing my interview. Buzzing. It's got five goals in three games or three wins out of three at the start of the season. 
So I go in back into the dressing room, fucking buzzing. I've won the game, got my man in the match, champagne, got my goal, buzzing. Quiet, the place is dead. Super Ali and Koji are standing in the corner, like sitting in the corner, even they're low. So I obviously I don't know this, but Walter, Walters gave them a dressing down. So I, I walk back in, fucking bubbly, got my champagne, right? And they're going to fucking go across to go across the super. I went, look at that, 15 minutes. Imagine what would have happened if I'd played 90. <laughs> <laughs> And Walter, Walter was just in the corner like that and he just stared at me and I thought, oh, for fuck's sake, he's went, he's obviously gave them an absolute burn and I'm I'm going in there bubbly and chirpy, so he just gave me the stare, so I just sat down, got my gear off and jumped in the shower. So he never gave you any thanks for scoring the winner, no? Thanks for scoring the winner, that's a job, mate, it's a job. Aye, that's it, mate, especially a number nine jersey. Yeah. It's obviously, as I said, incredible six-month period you had there. You were coming to the end of your contact, I believe, and there was a lot of speculation where you going, so you end up going to... Versus four. So obviously, I think, I hope you don't mind me saying, but realistically, there's going to, got to be a, a big financial uh, element to that. You were 30 year old. There was talk of it at the time, but what, what was your kind of thinking behind even at that time, considering you were you were on such a high? So, so what happened was, we went to, we came to Sydney, actually, that pre-season, and Walter had spoke to me on the way over and said he was going to, he wanted to re-sign me for another two years. And he goes, listen, I'm going to try and get you the same same contract. Right. So this is obviously, we hadn't signed the player. We had just signed Yelovich, actually. Yeah. Or we we're just about to sign Yelovich. I don't know if we had signed him yet. But he was so like the only, the only fee we kind of paid at that time. That's right. So we were, well, obviously we kind of knew that, again, from the discussions that I'd had about re-signing, uh, I kind of knew that maybe there was, there was some kind of issues. Didn't know what, because again, what were, I kept that away for us. We just had to focus on winning games. So I was like, of course, Gaffer, just, just let us know. So a few months had passed. We were well into the start of the season and he came to me saying, listen, right, that's it. I've got you. I've got your same deal, blah, blah, blah. I went, okay, no problem. So my agent spoke to the club. We went through it. I don't know exactly. Again, we never even kind of got down the road too far, but it got made quite clear that, firstly, there, there was, I don't think it was exactly the same as what it was, but then within 24 hours, I'd kind of been rescinded. I'd been taken off the table, and it was a significant uh, pay cut. So we were thinking, okay, what's going on? It's, listen, it's not about money and things. It's, it's not. But I was playing really, really well, and I was sort of scoring a lot of goals. And uh, I just, uh, I thought I at least deserved, at least deserved like the same kind of deal. So we made a way that I wasn't going to get that. So what we done at that point was it was just kind of knocked on the head at that point to wait and see how things were going to pan out over the the course of the season. And obviously my form continued, mm-hmm. and yet I I went to Bursa initially, but I kind of decided that thought that if I, the chance was to go rather than waiting to the end, I was thirty one actually at the time. Uh, I just turned thirty one in December. So rather than wait to the end of the season, if there was an opportunity, because I was going to be gone at the end of the season, that had been made quite clear because the a contract probably wasn't going to be there. So I'd actually agreed to go to Fiorentina. All right. I was going to Fiorentina. Uh, Big Ammo was a scout there. So everyone was agreed. I was going to Fiorentina. And great opportunity somewhere. I really thought my kind of style would, would have suited. And something happened... Literally, I was, I was expecting to fly on a Wednesday and I'd not heard a thing from my agent. And my agent, me and my, it's been my agent for 20 years now, like he's like a brother. And he hadn't been on the phone. And it just wasn't like him. And I phoned him up Wednesday. I went, what's going on, Dave? He went, honestly, you're not going to believe us. Son came out in a press, so I'll not go into it, but there was a bit of negativity surrounding it. And the club ended up getting a bit of cold feet, pulled the deal. About you? Yeah. Put, I, just about saying, our. Oh, Maybe maybe you know the right sign and it's not good enough to play for the blah blah blah. And the club ended up getting cold feet. Some it was a it was a something for an ex player. So anyway, the deal ended up going cold. So I was saying like, like I was all decided. Everyone was agreed. I was I was getting ready to jump on a plane. Spoke to the manager. Spoke to the manager. Everyone was done. And then it got pulled at last minute. So I kind of had my mindset that I, I was gone. Uh, there was another couple of opportunities on the table. Big Alex wanted me to go down to Birmingham, which is incredible, considering he patched me for ages all the years ago. <laughs> he so, can't uh, even bring up that guy, can he? No, he, he wants me, doesn't he want me? Well, he gives me my debut, then he wants to sell me. And, uh, so he, he had a chance to go there, but I just thought I didn't uh, quite fancy that opportunity at that time. Uh, so it was something different, you know. 
listen, it never, it never lasted long for pretty much family reasons. Not so much, not about the football. Uh, I actually enjoyed it. Great fans. People couldn't do enough for you. Really, as a technical kind of style of football with some really, really good players. Uh, enjoyed it. I, I done, had, a good, had a good five months there as well. Really, off to a flyer, scored a... Scored a goal in the full debut against Galatasaray. It was an amazing game. So, uh, but it just wasn't right for the family. So that's obviously when decided to, to move on. But I, I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave. But it was made apparent to me that come the end of the season, I was probably going to have to go. So when you're at that age as well, I thought maybe why not? Why take the risk of something but potentially going wrong and and going at that point rather than just just waiting to the end of the season. And hindsight, I wouldn't even say it's a regret, but I wish I had. I wish I had kind of seen that season out and finished with 40 goals and, and was able to play, like kind of go to the end of the season and, and, and have the have all the feelings again, that final day win as well. I mean, I'll be at a game the day, uh, the final win. It was our second last game of the season in Turkey. And I'm on my phone before we were kicking off checking and it was goal and it was goal and it was goal. It was like, it, it would have been amazing to be there, you know, but it's, uh, again, I like to think I played my part with it with the first half of the season and, and the goals that were scored and things helped us get to the kind of lead that we were at at that time. Did you still get your medals? I actually think you still finished. Did I? Did I? Did I? Nah, yeah. fair. I see you still finished up goal scorer, so you clearly played a huge part of that season. Yeah. So obviously, as you say, leave the club, go to Bursa Sport, I think MLS for a couple of years as well, and then you return in 2014. Did that come as a surprise at the age of 34? I'm assuming that when you left at 30 or 31, as you say, that you weren't obviously going to come back, but you're able to return to the club at the age of 34. Was that a wee bit of a surprise? You know, when I was in Turkey, I phoned Koisty and Koji to try and see if I would be able to come back that summer. Oh, really? Yep. And for one reason or another, it never quite, never quite panned out. When I went to, I went to Cardiff first and then I went to the MLS. So, Pretty much, and I kept in touch with, with, with Koiste and, and Koji over that time. And pretty much every time my transfer window came about when I was in Vancouver, I was getting yeah, to go back. I was always, and then eventually, after a couple of years, it, it, it kind of got done, which I had been, I, I would have done it whether we were, when we were in, league, in, uh, in League Two. I would have came back in League Two, no problem. It just so happened it was two years later. And when we were in the championship, uh, we just got promoted to the championship for League One with unbeaten season, and I got the chance to come back. So it was it was always on the cards. Oh, I, I wanted to come back and play my part. Like I said I tried to con- convince them to get me back for Turkey. Uh, one reason or another, it never happened. And then a couple of years down the line, it, I managed to get the chance to come back. So it was a, a no brainer for me. It was a good time to come back. I wanted to play my part. I've all, every time I've left, I've always can really really miss the place. Uh, it does feel feel like home. Yeah. Uh, the people that are there, I've always had good relationships with the people there. Even now, I've still still speak to probably staff more than players. To be honest with you, so it's uh, I it's uh, I ain't seen we Jean had retired this year for the kitchen as well. She followed her on Instagram, so I got her. <laughs> so she, she was uh, she was retiring, so it was uh, again. It's a, it's a shame again the way things finished off as well. It was you don't really got a chance to see all these people, which was disappointing. But listen, it's I always missed the place, so getting the chance to go back again for me was was amazing, and it was a good time for my family as well. Uh, Sloan was at a good. She was at the age where she was starting school, so it, would be, it was nice to get back in and kind of put down roots for that as well. So obviously, you come back in very different circumstances because other were called wearing the championship, and at that time. McCoy's always been a manager. You have to deal with a whole load of things out with just, just in the playing side. But how do you feel he dealt with being a manager? And do you feel as though it's a role that he could go into the future and, and excel in? I felt it was, like you say, he's probably managed through probably one of the hardest times, if not the hardest time in, in the club's history. Mm-hmm. And it was under so much uh, pressure dealing with other stuff. That I'll, I've always said I, I wish they had had the same opportunity as what other people had had, because with the level of the players obviously left the football club mm-hmm. at that moment, like McGregor left, Davis left, Whitaker left, Naismith left, Lafferty all left, Moe do left. Mm-hmm. I think there was a couple of younger lads that had left as well. Uh, so it was uh, it was it was tough. It was tough to obviously then. The season, we obviously we went into liquidation and there was points deductions and things. But we're actually about, was it 10, 12 points ahead of the league at the start of that season? Yep. Uh, and then obviously that got kind of, that had got kind of clawed back by around about 
where things were starting to go a bit peak Tom. But uh, obviously then the then the then the then the, then the points deduction came in and it kind of obviously finished off the league. All the players left. And then now we didn't even know what league we were going in. You know, we didn't know until what is it, a month or so or six weeks prior to the season maybe starting that we were told that yeah, that's it, you're at the bottom level. So I think Coyce then had to then go and get a squad together to get us through the leagues ultimately. And uh which they done and right by the way, should have done, yeah. right? Again, should have done, but we also should have got won the championship the first time you ask him. Yeah. But what, what I found is and I found hard was but it was it was a different it was a different place. Yeah. You know, like the, the, when I'm talking about the first group of players that I was in, right, was incredible, right? It maybe potentially wasn't the best group, mm-hmm. but in terms of individual group of players, incredible. You come back in the 2008, still really, really good players, fully internationals, but a group was a strong group, really, really strong group, good dressing room, uh, never say die, fight to the end as shown and the first league season, fighting that points difference back. Second season, the nine men cup final, no signing players, still winning leagues, still winning cups every season. There was a real winning mentality in that group. And then you come back, and it, it just wasn't, wasn't quite like there. There was the standards were, were no there the same way as what they had been. Uh, I know Coyster was trying so hard to drive that and and get that that, that kind of that these standards back and, and the demand and the, and the levels every day. It's the daily habits. It's daily habits of players. Like when you're at a, when you're at a club like Rangers, your, your, your standards have to be higher mm-hmm. and they must be met every day. It can't just be hopefully turn up on a Saturday and win a game because mm-hmm. that season it showed we never done that. Yeah. We couldn't do it often enough. And I, I, I say now, we actually finished third in ah. the championship that year. Great. It's absolutely phenomenal to think now that we finished third in the championship. Mm-hmm. Like to where we're, to where we were to where we are now that that year we finished on the championship and you know I was lucky I was lucky that I had a contract because otherwise I would I would have been out as well I would so have I been think, out as well and I would have completed that journey. Yeah, I think often people talk about you know Ibrox great place to play your football. The fans are passionate, great to play in front of and stuff. But on the flip side, I can imagine we can be a very tough support to play in front of as well. Just kind of how difficult was it to do that that season? That was that was incredible because you're right. If you've not got that, and this is where you're talking about really, really good players who potentially might not have the the mentality or the character to deal with certain things, it can be a tough place to play if things are not going well. That year, I'm sure the the, the crowds were like dwindling down to like twelves and fifteen thousands for some of the games, yeah. which is again, it's just it's just absolute alien to that football club. The yeah. players have seen the support that the club have had through the levels. I came back when I was in Vancouver. I came back to. Uh, a game in League League Two against Peter Head, I think it was, right. and I think there was fifty thousand at the game. Right. I'm sitting, in, I'm sitting in the stand watching this game. Thinking, this is a League Two game in Scotland, and there's fifty thousand. Like the fans just followed near and far, you yeah. know. High and low just followed everywhere, everywhere, everywhere the team went. And again, it was like there was a them versus us type thing against the, towards the club at that time. And but that year, because things were going so bad. It was just uh, the crowds were dwindling as well. And when that happens, there's something wrong, you know. Mm-hmm. So we really, really underperformed. And everybody was in, involved in that group, I'll, I'll say that. It was poor. I really did feel fortunate that I was still there the following year because yeah. I had a contract that was uh, triggered on appearances and I, I played any time I was fit, I, I normally played. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was just grateful I managed to get the chance to stay the next year and I was there under wards. Yeah. So obviously, as I said, very poor season, disappointing one. Uh, we ended it really poorly with the Marvel game. However, <laughs> a bit of time lightning would have been a bit and talk about this man, Mojny. Was he, he seemed like an absolute screwball before he'd done that in the Marvel game. Talk, what was he like as a guy? You know, it was it was actually, it was so, so quiet. But, 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 like, really, really quiet. But it was, it was just, it was one of these guys when you go on the field, like, he's, he'll, he'll fight you. He'll, and he will fight you. Like we seen at the end of the game, <laughs> if things are not going to go right, he could he could land on you, and that was it was just. Okay, but see, in training and that, he was a clumsy, clumsy big fucker. You know, he would always be tackling and standing on people's toes and just like, kind of c- coming across potentially as dirty. But it wasn't. It was just. It was actually a like really really quiet, decent guy. But go on the field, you play. If you don't do know on his team. Then he will. He's, he's he's there to fight you. And the end of that game was carnage. You know, it was absolute carnage. 
I mean, there's actually a picture of me, and I'm, I'm like this with someone. <laughs> I, see the, I see the picture. Of it. Like, I never went through it, but I'm yeah. thinking, what am I doing? I'm, I'm 34, 35. What am I doing here? Never like, went through it, it but you must have, felt, must have felt like a hard man showing everybody that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I'd done the boy, and they're like, oh, no, you never can. You never even want <laughs> It was like one of these things, like you know. Again, it was a, it was a, it was an embarrassing end to a really, really poor cool season for us. Uh, obviously, manager changed at that point as well. Koisty had left. Koji now had left. Kenny, uh, sorry, uh, Stuart McCall had come in. We had different staff. Uh, to be fair, he kind of steadied the ship a wee bit for what was going on, and like got us. I wouldn't say playing, but he kind of organised us to a way again probably know to get beat. I remember we went, we'd been, Hibs had battered us all that season, if you remember. Uh, but we had went to Easter Road when Stuart was in, he literally just matched them up. Yeah. That's what he said to us, they were going to match them up. Right. And they won 2-0. Uh, I think big, the big Waldo score and I and scored in the game, right. 2-0. And then we got them in the playoffs as well and we beat them at home and that was a brilliant night that night to be honest, I was beating Hibs at, in the playoffs. We then got through uh, and obviously the final was just a disaster. Uh, but uh, aye, so it was a poor end, poor end to a really poor season. I think it's one of them you can laugh about now, but I agree with you at the time it was embarrassing and it just sort of summed up that season, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, we move on and I think things started to look a wee bit pretty off the field as well in the boardroom, so there was still that sort of lag between whether Stuart McCall was going to get it, whether we were going to go somewhere else. I think there's a couple of foreign managers linked to it as well, actually. But in comes Mark Warburton, obviously he'd made a... A good reputation for yourself down at Brentford. What were your early impressions of him? Impressed. It was right for the word go. Uh, obviously, bringing Big Davy back as well, because he had worked with him at Brentford again, was always going to come back with him, but it was a, a no-brainer to bring the big man back with him as well. Uh, knows the club, captain the club, been there for five years as a player. Knew, knew what it was about. Uh, straight away, his cards were on the table, but how he wanted to play, there was un, under no illusion of how he wanted how we how we how he, he wanted us to play, wanted to play a certain style. Uh, again, knew what the demands of the club were. It was he put out straight away, win the league, mm-hmm. no, just win it, smash it, get European football back to the club, and ultimately they win the league back. That was the, that was the steps. Yeah. Uh, again. Did go through the league. Hibs were again another worthy, worthy challenger towards that. They were a really, really good team at that time. Obviously, needless to say, both of us were in the cup final at the end of the year, which I think that's the first time that's that's happened with two teams outside the top flight that were in the final. Uh, but I we played some really, really good stuff that year. Obviously, it was signings now. You look at Tav was signed, who's now club captain. And again, if you were to sell him, you're probably looking upwards of 15 million to get rid of him. Excellent recruitment. Waggy left again after having a couple of good seasons. Uh, again, he was, he's having to sign players on a different budget yeah. to what any other Rangers manager had. Uh, so we're having to kind of put it as signings that no lot of fans would have knew, mm-hmm. but turned out to be good signings for us that year to get us up. Uh, so some good, he obviously still had myself there who had been at the club a number of years, Big Lee Wallace, a number of years. Obviously, that a lot of players had left as well because I think even the chairman had actually came out and said that it hadn't been good enough and anybody who had been part of it who never had a contract was literally left. Yeah. So everybody who had never had a contract was out the door mm-hmm. and Wobbs had the opportunity to kind of structure his squad together the way he saw fit and uh, put a good squad together for the for that level. Like We're yeah. always, I said the season before, we should have won it. We did win it. We won it well. Uh, had some really good moments that season. Obviously, the semi-final being a massive highlight that season but on the flip side of that the final was the biggest low one of the probably the biggest lows in my career to be honest so but it was a good year or all it could have been a great year considering yeah. like you said no one the Scottish Cup since 2009 we've then made a missed another opportunity this year we could have had that Scottish Cup in 2016 two one up me and your bro scoring the goals as well your bro could have had a cup final winner uh, don't, don't remind me <laughs> two, two minutes to go sorry ten minutes to go two one up we should be seeing that game out. So, really disappointed. See, see, it's just funny, you touched on it at the start, he came in and made the message really clear. So, it's funny, obviously, you said Walter Smith was similar, they're two totally different guys, right? One was very honest and maybe a more stern way, but he provided a lot of clarity on his own beliefs. Do you think, 
just this is kind of off topic a wee bit, but do you think what makes a good, one of the sort of key attributes of a good manager is clarity? Because that's what I think Warburton did kind of bring in terms of style of play, but that almost get used against him as well with, with the media and some support. No, it did. It did. Uh, and I absolutely believe clarity. And it's not just clarity. And it's clarity in so many ways. What it did is it allowed the fans to an understanding of what he was trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. You know, so you as fans were never, ever in doubt how we were going to try and play. Yeah. It was, by the way, it was an opportunity to really hone it in the championship, yeah. which we did. Played some excellent stuff. I actually missed the first uh, league game of the season against St Mirren, but the place was absolutely oh, right. rocking that night. Yeah. Rocking. Yeah, there was full of optimism. Uh, the place was electric. And we won, I think we won the game 3-1 that night. Yeah, that- uh, Incredible atmosphere, but there was real clarity within the within the group. There was clarity of how we we're going to play, what was expected, of the roles, the responsibilities, each position, and in the and in the team. So yeah, it was, and it's huge for any manager. You need to have that. You need to understand that. Again, what I would say about about the time at Warburton. Again, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, and this, you hear this and you hear that, and this is why I left. And did they resign? Did they not resign? Did all oh, this kind of carry on uh, about what was going on? But I believe we were making forward steps. Yeah. We were making forward steps. Even the year we went up, I think, uh, we, talk, we were talking about it off air before we came on that. The recruitment that year potentially wasn't right. Yeah. But I think he, like Mark Warburton is a very, very intelligent man. Away from football, he's a very intelligent man. But he knows football. And he recognised that there was potential errors made that, that summer in recruitment. Uh, and I, I felt he probably did deserve a, a chance to re- rectify it. And I do believe, and I still believe, and I'm sure your brother would tell us the exact same or anybody that was involved in that group, had he not left, I felt we, we still would have second that year. By the way, we would have been miles back behind Celtic, right? Because that was their unbeaten year. Yeah. And I've always said, you can't, we couldn't judge ourselves based on how many points Celtic have got. We had to judge ourselves based on us. And we should have more points that year. But I believe if he had still been there, we still we would have got second that year. I do, but listen, unproven, and we'll never. But I believe we would have. I no, believe we would have. I think uh, if it means that, that I agree with you, and I think that the point you made about how well Celtic done that year probably went against him. I totally agree because you could even sort of compare that to to Celtic was this year. The, the three and a half will be a bit more, but see up until January. Their points per game was actually quite decent, but we were just that good. And I think that if you look back on that year. Realistically, we were never we were never going to get ninety plus point. Probably we weren't going to get eighty plus. But if you actually look at the next season, uh, where Tushinia came in, whatever else, we spent a bit of money. We still we were three points better off. So it's and go back to the point you made about the championship was sort of the year to hone that style of play. What do you think would have been the case? Obviously, it's unrealistic and it's all hearsay. But what do you think would have happened? See if Warburton was able to come in a year or two earlier. If we could really establish that style of play from top to bottom, do you think that would have made us in an even better place going into the Prem? All, all I would say on it is that when you get to that level, it's a different level. So yeah. going for the championship and, and putting it into, into, into play, the reasons it's probably as easier, and again, it's with no disrespect to anybody, if you do make mistakes, the chances are you're potentially no one gets punished as much yeah. as what you would have. And we did make mistakes that year. There were certain games that we were really put. And I think after, I think it was something after we won the semi-final. I don't think we won another game. Well, yeah, four, four at the end of that season, there was draw, 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 and obviously we lost the cup final. Mm-hmm. So, like, we still there were still games where we never done it. There was a lot of things going on about. We're talking about how can we tighten up on uh, transitions? How can we stop getting countered on and blah blah blah? There was a lot of things getting discussed even at that time that we're still getting talked about the next season. But now you're playing against a higher level of player. You're yeah. playing against better teams that we were getting punished for certain things uh, that we uh, were probably going to get punished for this season before. And when that happens, if you've not got the strong characters within the group, they can start to doubt it. And that did happen. That crept into that group the following season uh, for one reason or another. Whereas you had people who were fully believing it. Like, that's how I want to play. I know that's how a lot of other boys want to play. But there was maybe a wee bit of starting off. Oh, can we do that? Again, plan B. Kept hearing a lot about fucking plan B. <laughs> so we can change the way we play. And listen to Russell Martin, who came to the club. Uh, I'll to about, 
Yeah, unbelievable, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely unbelievable. And his right plan B is stick a big fucker yeah. up front and kick the ball long. Yeah. Well, why would you do that? See, if you train that every day, do it. Yeah. But why would a team who want to play football and play a certain way go and do that if they're no ball to do? You know, it was a brilliant interview. Really not. I texted him actually, but it was I thought it was I thought it was excellent. Yeah. And a real good ex clear, by the way, explanation of why you will not do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. we were the same a wee bit. And again, but like you say, sometimes that plan B make plan A better was kind of thrown back in Warbles' face a wee bit. But that's what it meant. That's what it was meaning. I don't get that because that's obvious, surely. Obviously, that like if you've got a style of play, like and the thing is, I don't think yourself just now or him is saying that going direct is wrong. But that's no. just how that team was built. No. If we did that way no, no. or Barry McKay, it wouldn't have worked. So why would we do it? And that's exactly it, you know. It's ultimately the games that never worked for us was no because it was wrong. It's because we, we never performed within it. It's hit it wrong high. Exactly. Or we got we got people who maybe lost a wee bit of confidence, and when the fans did get on top of us because there was a wee bit of mistakes, started to go oh, 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 away, hang fire here. Maybe this is no for me. Yeah. Maybe this is no for me. And it's happened to many a player. Yeah. Many a player. Whether it be really, really good player, it's not, or maybe no so good player who's not been able to handle it. And that's where, listen, it's the best place in the world to play. It is. There's no getting away from that. But it is hard. It can be hard in those times. And that's where it takes a, it takes a strong character, strong mentally, believe, like, confident in what you're actually doing. But it needs a team of that to actually see through the hard times. And uh, obviously, Wobbs then obviously ended up leaving, I think it was in about January, February time. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, it was all the kind of work that he had kind of put was now, it's no toned down, but you're now moving on to a different manager who might have completely different ideas, different different, uh, different way of playing, might want to play a different formation, might need a different style of player, type of player to actually play the way he wants to play. So it was going to be a bit of an overhaul. So obviously we'll take it back a wee bit if you don't mind to a time where it did work. It was obviously that semi-final game. So for me personally, I think looking back on that game, people can kind of forget how good it felt at that time because we never went on to win the final. But just for yourself, how special was that day given the circumstances of being a championship? There was still a lot of doubt in that game. A lot of people had us doubt to get battered because people, again, now look back and think, oh, Dallas team were, were shite. But at the time, they were still the top team in the country and we were a league below. We went there that day, played really, really well. So how was it to be a part of? Listen, it was a brilliant day. It was an incredible day. Again, it is sour, the fact that we never went on to win it, because we never achieved anything that day, you know, and that's, again, that's where, where, where I'm at. Like, I've, I want to win, you know, so that's part, that's one step along the way to win the cup, and ultimately we fell down. We fell down at the final hurdle, and it was absolutely gutted that, that that's the way it went. But that day, again, for what it was, against them, I mean, like you say, we were down to get barred. Nobody would have gave us a chance based on we're in the championship and they're, they're winning the league, they've won the league X amount of years, blah, 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 blah. But genuinely, we we absolutely believed that we would have won that game. We believed that we would be the better team. We believed that we could pass through them and play out the way we played. And absolutely, listen, you have to ride your luck. Pass it, Roberts' chance should be in the back of the goal, right? No doubt about it. But we were the better team that day. We were the better team... Uh, Played better stuff, but had a better idea of what we were actually doing, better structure we knew. Again, me and Waldo were together the night before. And you you Andy will have told you about Waldo. I don't know if you've ever spoke to him. But the big man loves his football, you know, Thanks football daft, loves loves his coaching, great guy. Me and him were up on the suede headboard with X's and O's, working out what was going to be happening the next again. Night, the next day. Honestly, salt and peppers, brown sauces and ketchups were all over the table. <laughs> And we're going through what, and honestly, I can tell you, hand on heart, we went through it and the game panned out how we thought it would. Right. In terms of us trying to play, them maybe being a wee bit of, you know, who, who do you think they are trying to play through us? And then we'd get big beat on coming out, recklessly, headless chicken, trying to press you, and you pass round them. The ball ends up switched, Barry McKay puts over the top for me, I got a touch and Craig Gordon has to make a really good save. Yeah. But that's what, that's what we asked the way we played that day. So we believed that's how the game would go. We believed we would be able to implement our game onto them, mm -hmm. which we did. Yes, they've got good players. Yes, we had to ride our luck at some points because they are, they, are, they are a good team. They did have good players. They were always going to have opportunities to score. But I think at the end, yeah, the, the best team won on the day. Yeah, it went to penalties, but I think the team that deserved to win, won that game. Absolutely, mate. And as I said, my memories of that day alone, it was unbelievable just given the circumstance and 
how we played. So I think as, as a range of support, everybody was well on board with the sort of Warburton thing at that time. So to see it kind of come to fruition on the biggest game of the season was was excellent. But and one of the big, one of the biggest things for me is right, and this is where like players come and go and coaches come and go and things. But like I said before, when you've got guys and staff members that have been at the club for numbers and numbers of years, and I said it's one of the biggest things that I didn't like the way it finished. That I never actually even got to see these people again or say to your own. Thanks by the way, thanks to them for looking after us for all these years, you know, kitchen staffs, people are about Murray Park or Ibrox, Big Glavie, Stevie Walker, the Fizz, all these guys that have been there over the course and distance, they've been through the, the hard times, been on the, all the journey and now, now the happy days are back. But I remember that day, Big Lavi was like, I'm sure he was, he was bubbling, he was <laughs> bubbling like a big way. And I looked at him and I thought, you know, that's what it means, you know, that's what it means. So I meant a lot that day. Yeah, but listen, we never went on to finish the job. But, you seen what it meant to people, and it was a, it was a special day. Like it was emotional. It was an emotional day because it was just like you know what? Or again, it probably played a part in what happened after with them, who yeah. they appointed, how they appointed them, and uh, and what came next. But uh, great day, great result. Like I say, just disappointed that never we never finished the job. And I think you kind of touched on it earlier, and it relates to something that I'd brought up in our pod a couple of weeks ago. I talked about the sort of psychology of football, and I mentioned that example at the Scottish Cup final. And I certainly felt that if we'd won that day, then things would have been different in the next season in terms of how the media perceived what they perceived Warburton, how the fans did, and then maybe how our squad reacted. Do you feel the same? I think it might have. It might have bought them a little bit more credit mm-hmm. with, with fans, with the club, uh, because it would have been an incredible achievement. Like I said, we are that close to having an incredible season. Yeah. We're a good season, but ultimately what was achieved should have been achieved. That's made no mistake about it, should have been achieved. But if we could have went on and lifted that, lifted the Scottish Cup, again, that would have been a that would have been a better achievement. It yeah, would have totally. been a bigger achievement. Let's say we've still not won a cup. This year we've won the league, first time we've won a major trophy in 10 years. We could have won a cup in 2016, should have won a cup in 2016 and let it slip in the last eight, ten minutes. So, yeah, it might have, things might have been different for him as well, which he might have then got the chance to rectify the mistakes. He openly admits he would have probably, he probably would have done things a little bit different in that summer's recruitment. Uh, so, again, you touched on it there, but the, the summer recruitment kind of seemed a strange one to me. Uh, Guys like Barton, Kranjka, Senderos, Joey Garner just didn't seem like Warburton type players. And it's funny, I've wrote down slow start to the season. Every one of them were, were pretty slow. I uh, think two wins for seven. And then obviously lost 5-1 uh, in the first old term of the season. Did you, did you feel, as, was there a feeling that it was kind of beginning at the end for him at that point? Well, I, I'd hope not. But as, as, with, as with that club and any big club, when it looks like you're not going to have a successful year. You're always going to fall under pressure. And it, maybe, again, it was maybe down to, certainly, again, maybe the style wasn't as evident because we did have players that might not quite be fully committed to what, what we're trying to achieve like we did like we did the season before. But slow start. You start at home to Hamilton and you draw, right, straight away. Like, you're off. The, 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 the positivity and the energy surrounding that season was like nothing else. Mm-hmm. It was like nothing else because because of the semi final, because of what had happened, we thought we could go toe to toe with them. Yeah. We really did. We believed that. By the way, I did on any given day over the course of the season. I'm I'm I go into every game thinking we're going to win. Yeah, it doesn't matter who we're playing. Every game I would think we win, but we just had there was a bit of a we kind of move away from what we were trying to do. Yeah, uh, and again. Natural human reaction results are no going as well. Performances are not as good as what they had been, both by the way, collectively and individually. People are going to start to question. By the way, the pressures then mount. The pressure then mounts on that place, and I, that's where it is a hard, hard place to come. Come and play. You need to. You need to be absolutely real strong mentality to deal with a lot of the shit that gets thrown at you when you're an old front player. And uh, ultimately, it, it never went that way that season. Wobs left. Obviously, again, for me, I did think it was premature. Again, without being privy to what was going on behind the scenes and all the things that was kind of thrown back between both parties, not being privy to that. But I do believe it was probably a little bit premature for him to leave. And I know we were all gutted. We were all gutted that it was away, that's for sure. Because uh, not just him, by the way, because Big Davy, Big Davy's a great big guy, brilliant guy to work with, a good coach, 
really good coach. Uh, I felt we had good good people at the club with the right. They had the right ideas that they they had. Warbs obviously through Davey as well had obviously embraced what the club was about. Tried to get these standards back and like bought into the traditions of the club. Really respect, really respectful people, good people. That was a, that was just that was a shame to see them leave. Yeah. Well, obviously that, that's the next question I'm going to ask, but I kind of figured that would be be your answer anyway. And then after they left, there was kind of a lag between them leaving and a new manager coming in, which in my opinion kind of made it seem even more like a premature decision because I wasn't that sort of ready replacement. But then, obviously, I think it was maybe about a month or so after, it was after the next old firm game, uh, Pedro Cachina gets the job. Uh, what were your early impressions of him? Uh, again, what it was, was it was absolutely clear on what he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Was it right? In my opinion, no. no. In my opinion, no. And I think, obviously, again, history does suggest that that, that that probably is would be the general opinion. But he believed in what he was doing. Uh, again, I just on the pro licence, I had just had a last month, it was Andre Villas boss was, uh, was speaking on the pro licence, uh, another Portuguese coach. And his presentation he put up was very, very similar to right. what Pedro you know, would talk about. Right. Uh, a lot of the same language, the same kind of methodology, uh, the same belief in how uh, that, that it would work and it did and it does work. The thing, the difference is, is about how you apply it for me because nobody's questioning the methodology, nobody's questioning the, the way to do it because some of the best coaches in the world are on the same page of how you should do it and how it should be worked. But it's how you apply it. And straight away, I would say, you're talking about first meetings, I would say one of the first meetings, I, he never lost the dressing room. Like, that never happened. But what he might have had is a dressing room thinking, hmm, I'm not sure you are. You get what this club's about. You get what this. And one of the, so that was the first few times, obviously, again, we never had great results over the course of his time. And again, there was another heavy defeat uh, in an old firm game towards the end of that season. There was also a semi-final loss, I think it was, 2-0, yeah. uh, under his tenure, which... 2-0, we never laid a glove on them. Uh, again, they were a really good team, managed by one of the top managers in the world, He's in my opinion. Really, yeah. uh, so it was, uh, again, no great result. And I remember one day he pulled me in to explain what he was trying to do. So I was sitting in the meeting room and he's got his, all his stuff on and it was, wow. it was, showing, me, it was showing me clips his ex-team in Qatar, Al Garafa, playing against whoever they were playing in the, in the Qatari league. And it was showing, look, Kenny, look, that's so if we do this and we do that. And and I'm watching it thinking, aye, you know, you're right, yeah, you I can see, I can see exactly. So if what we had worked on, it was either that day or the day before, to what he was showing me was a direct copy a, a pattern or a phasey play for that game to what we had done in training. The difference being when they're playing their attacking stuff, they're two for two and three for three at the back. They're not getting that against Listen, I went, I, I, I get what you're trying to do and I can see it. Listen, I can see it by working and what you're showing me there, that how it worked there. But we're going to have 10 men behind the ball. Mm-hmm. There's going to be four or five, six along the 18 yard box. We are not going to have half a pitch to play a one, two and one, three and go one on one. Yeah. It's just, it's not, that, it's not going to be that way. And what, what was... The, the, the kind of defining moment of trying to and that, by the way I tried to speak to him about it to try and let him know that what you maybe watch Motherwell v Patrick Thistle will not be what we are facing the next week yeah. we are not going to face that it might be a different system it might be different personnel it, like there's so many differences that will come in they might play a different way they might just launch it against us just to just to get the ball away for goal and what, the, what defined it for me is we were playing Patrick the following week and we done, and the way the methodology worked is, and again, I'm sure Andy's told you, pretty much from a Monday stroke Tuesday, you would know what the team is for the Saturday. To the start of it, right at the start of the week. Maybe not the Monday because it would be a split squad, but that's he'd done that a lot, and that's something that caused not again, not a, a great. It wouldn't be a divide in the group, but 
there was that wee starters and non-starters. Right. And it was like that for most of the most of the week. So the starters would be doing a recovery type session on the Monday. The non-starters would be doing an extra bit of work, a bit of top up. Come the Tuesday, because it's a it was like a tactical periodization, I think you called it. You were doing work on the Tuesday, which is fine by the way, mm-hmm. with, with an eye on the Saturday. But what it meant was it pretty much again took the team that it was going to be doing and it was going against the other team in a set and draw. So we would be doing this and we are set up to play Partick. So we had Partick had played the following week and I think they were, were they 4 4 2. I think they were 4 4 2. And Big Connor Salmon was playing left midfield for Partick <laughs> in yeah. the week before. So needless to say, we, we prepared by we can get at him on that side because. But Connor's a good big striker. It's not left. He's not a left midfielder and a four. So we had done all our work on all our work. Well, they played a back three that day. No four four two. Connor Salmon was on the bench, <laughs> and I think they were, they were like a, I think they were like a three five one one, and it yeah. was like a midfielder was like the second striker, so it wasn't even a striker. And that that's where you're like honestly, the whole week was built up to play this against the team playing a certain way. So by the way, I think we I think we actually drew the game. I think we might have drew 2-2 two, two in that game. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, it's not the reason we drew 2-2, two, two, by the way, because I don't care how we played or how they played. We should still win the game, right? And again, that's no being disrespectful to, to Partick at that time. When I played for Partick, you know, it's no being disrespectful at all. But Rangers, 99 times out of 100, 9 times out of 10, should, should beat Partick no matter what. No matter what. Yeah, there'll be the odd game or games where things go against you. Maybe we are levels. I mean, I've been in the other team playing against Rangers. What you're looking for is your levels are there. Rangers drop a wee bit because I know that up for the, the game and it becomes a more level match. Yeah. Right? That's what you're hoping for. Well, on that day, the prep, again, but in terms of his preparation and how he tried to work, that kind of summed it up a wee bit where the whole fucking week was pretty much pointless, you know, mm-hmm. because we're constantly worked through this periodization that it wanted to work, worked on specific movements to go against a set way, mm-hmm. that that's not how it was. So, uh, and again, it works. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but sometimes it's about how I apply it. It's maybe about how you treat people, not necessarily how good a tactical, how good a tactician they are. So it was, uh, aye, listen, it never worked. It never worked, obviously. It led to, it led to him leaving three months, four months into the next season. Yeah. Uh, I think he had been at the club totally seven months maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was that. Obviously, what happened between me and him, again, is nothing actually happened. He just decided to make a fucking point. Uh, I became a scapegoat to another poor fucking old firm performance. <laughs> uh, one that I never even played in, by the way, because I was on the bench. Right. Uh, but that was that. But listen, it was, I never ever had any issue with him. Trained every day. Like I always have trained hard. Uh, then he eventually left, and obviously I managed to get back in. Like so it was strange that you say that there was definitely a clear sort of attempt to him to phase you out, which was a surprise given the season before. I actually think you had played the most games of MD in the squad, and at that point, I don't. You must have been about 36, 37. So to go from having a guy who played the most games, I think, I think I've got it well done. I think you were the top goal scorer as well. And then it seemed as though he kind of tried to phase you out almost. I don't know if this is Marble's, not yours, obviously. It seemed like a guy who had like a lack of self-awareness and maybe I don't know if it was a, an arrogance, but he didn't want to allow a senior guy like yourself to sort of offer your opinion, even though you'd clearly had loads of experience in, in that league. So you would kind of know these sort of things before he would. Well, like I say, there was, a, there was only maybe one or two occasions that we, we spoke about this kind of stuff and I, and I gave my view. There was never any disagreement. There was never any, it was, again, I'm trying to offer you, if you're asking me, then I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, an answer. Uh, and I gave him my, my view on what I thought. Uh, and it was there. There was no disagreement or any, even a debate, it was just he's asked a question, I gave an answer to a question. And again, what then happened, obviously, after that old firm game, like you say, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what happened because I went to see him. Like, I genuinely, like, and again, I don't think I've talked about this before. After that game, again, this is sand on heart, I knew it was coming. We played Hamilton on the Friday night and I knew it was coming. And I just, I, I just, you can just feel, and you've been in, I've been in football a long time. And I've got a fair gauge on how people react in certain situations. And I knew there was something, something was the right. So I actually spoke to him 
on the Tuesday. I said, you all right, Gaffer? He's like, yes, yes, fine, fine, fine. You're acting weird. You're acting weird with me. You're, 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 you're kind of looking me in the eye, you're walking past the hall. Like, it's just weird. Mm-hmm. Like, no, 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 Kenny, no, no. And he's all smiles and that. Oh, okay. Hunt, no word I. Phone David Weir. Says, David, there's something going on here. Phone Walter Smith. Walter. And as I said to him, I'm getting left out on Friday night. He went, nah, fucking no way, Kenny. No way, gaffer. I went, I'm telling you. There's something no right here with this fucker. There's something no right. He's went, right, okay. So I ran through there. He went, go and see him. Go and see him. Again, I went, gaffer, I went to see him today. He went, go and see him again. Get him to tell you if there's something wrong. Because it's clear that clearly there is. I went, right, no ball, gaffer, no ball. Went to see him. No, no, nothing wrong. I went, gaffer, come on, there's something wrong. Like you're, 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 you're acting differently. No, 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 not at all. Sure enough, Thursday comes, squad goes up, not in the squad. If there was nothing wrong, why would you not say, I'm leaving you the squad? Because uh, that, that is something wrong for a guy like yourself who's played on the end. Why, 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 why would you not do that? Why would you not do it? So anyway, the squad, so I go straight through him. I says, Gaffer, what, what's going on? Why am I not in the squad? He went, oh, this is just one decision. <laughs> I went, but, but why? He went, no, no, no reason. I went, no, no, there has to be a reason. You've made a decision. If it's one decision, what's the reason behind the decision? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, 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 this is just one decision. I was like, fucking hell. Just okay, no problem. Go. No problem. All the best. All the best, Gaffer. Listen, hope we win. Soon after one, four, one, three, one, whatever it was, boys were great. One next week, get beat in the semi final against Mullerwell. Uh, to the extent, by the way, I felt uh, I had to ask if I could actually go and watch the game because he just he was acting really super weird. Uh, and I wanted him to actually allow me to watch the game. I didn't want to turn up to the game. If in case he thought I was there for some fucking other reason, and you, you felt you actually felt that excluded you felt you had to ask if you could go and watch the game. I didn't know how to go. I went and seen him. I said, Gaffer, do you mind if I come to the game? He went, Oh, of course, of course, you can come on the bus. You come in. No, no, that's fine because Waldo was injured and Nico was injured. So I knew they were going to the game. Yeah. So I didn't want to no go to the game, mm-hmm. but I knew if I, I felt like if I'd went to the game, he would feel. Yeah. I'm there for different reasons, you know. This is how it was fucking weird, you know, really, really weird. So I asked him, Do you mind if I come to the game, support the boys? He went, No, no, of course, of course. So we went to the game. Obviously, we lost the game 2 0, uh, semi final. And then we, we drew the Kilmarnock on the Wednesday night. And then, and that was that. He was, he was gone. So obviously, he leaves, Murray comes back in, and he brings you back in the first game, if I remember right, in Murrayfield. Uh, yeah. That game you scored two. And don't know if you remember, but you had an unbelievable ovation for the support. How, how good did that feel, given the sort of troubles you had with Pedro? No, nah, amazing. Like you know, I've, I've always, I've always says like the fans are, are unbelievable. They gave me a an incredible uh, reception that day. I think it helped that we won the game. By the way, <laughs> it helped that we won the game. <laughs> we get food to forgive me. I was going to say, I Miller's fault again. But, uh, <laughs> it's uh, no, but it was not. It was great. Good game. Got a couple of goals. Great to be back, you know. Like, like I said, I trained every day. I was training every day, every week. And again, the way I looked at it is, listen, I know I wasn't going to be involved at the weekend. Uh, but it was even to the extent some of the boys were saying, oh, you'll be involved this week. You've had a poor result, you'll be involved this week. I went, no, no, no it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And by the way, I'm not just talking about my mates who were in the team. I'm talking about guys who had signings what are even saying, Oh sure, you'll be fine. You'll be back in this week. I'm, I'm like, no, this guy's looking lost the plot. I'll not be in. Was there motivation for you? Obviously, you've seen the character. You would train your best every day, regardless. But was it in the back of your mind? Obviously, you were probably thinking, see if I, I'm going to keep training well because I know I'll be here longer than him. No, never, no. never thought that. No. Never ever thought that because all I'd done was my my role now was. So when he's doing his prepar- the way he worked and his preparation, trying to prepare the team to win a game, my job was to be the best I could be on the other team right. to help the team be ready for the game. Yeah. That was it. That was my role. Uh, train hard every day. Come in, again, just do what I've done every, every day. I've, every day all my career, not just under him. Every day, train hard, train right. My job was to help the team be ready. Right. So I had to do that. Uh, do, but that, that's what my role was at the end of the end of my time there as well because again we'll go into that 
as well. But it was just uh, that that was that's what I had to do. Obviously, now when he left, I managed to get a chance to go back and play, and that's what you work for. You know, you work Monday to Friday to play that game on a Saturday, and I'd missed that, but there's nothing I could do about it. You know, you, you control what you can control. I can't control what somebody else thinks or the actions that our manager's going to make. All I can do, like I said, there was never a falling out. There was never a falling out. It was uh, a few things happened. Uh, that one day falling out, but a few things happened that I'm not going to. But I trained every day, every day, smiling, shakes your hand, good morning, blah, blah, blah. You go out and you train. You go out and you train. And that was it. I just never had my game at the end of the week. Yeah. So as I say, obviously, you, you work your way back in, but then we get to, so you access, you were doing well in that season when, when you got uh, back into the team. And then we get to that semi final game, sort of infamous game where we lose 4 0. As a fan, we lose the game, disappointed, we've got the road and we think that's the end of it. But obviously something happened between that time, the end that made it was it was your last game for the club. On the back of that, Lee Wallace never played the game again, you were kind of scapegoated again. What, what what happened in that gap in between to, to make that happen? You know, like, like I said to touch on you before, like in football, things happen in dressing rooms. <laughs> and when emotions are running high at the end of an old fun game, when you've absolutely been battered again on a on a in a national semi-final, it was unacceptable. Again, certain things happened within the day, again, with your brother that were for me absolutely unforgivable to do that to somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was just Again, there was there was no none of the stuff, the speculation that there was. There was literally a, the captain of Glasgow Rangers addressing his teammates to let them know that that kind of stuff's not good enough. That is it. That's where it went. And then there was a bit of to and fro. And just no. Again, there was there was things going on at half time in that game. If people were ranting and raving, no, 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 me, no Waldo, uh, other players ranting and raving and going off, and staff members going off because we were getting pumped again. Yeah. The Celtic. And at the end of the game, it was much of the same. But for some reason, because it was me and Lee who were actually having a, not again, not even a pop, just actually letting us, let, let's speak, the, addressing our teammates. That You know, there's a feeling, right? When, you, when you're in a situation with people, you've got vibes of people. And in the dressing room at Hamden, I pretty much sit right in the middle when we're there. So my, my gear was always in the middle. So probably half the boys doing to the right, half the boys up to the left are in the home dressing room. And after the game, nothing was said. Nothing was said. So the boys are sitting, and there's like silence. And I, I'm, I, I, I can remember as clear as day. I kind of was looking about and thinking, "Fucking, they're saying, and they're no saying. I've not played. Like, fucking hell." And I, and I knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. I knew what was going on. What I mean by that is, I go back in, Robbie, like he says, against Hearts, and I played pretty much every minute, yeah. every game until I went down into the Easter Road. I can rip my hamstring mm-hmm. in the Easter Road in the eighth game in a row. Uh, played every minute. I think we won six and we, we, drew, and we got beaten two. We lost to Hamilton and Dundee. It was the old, I think that was the old headstand game. <laughs> uh, so uh, we lost two, we won six. Had some really good results against Aberdeen. Really, it was a double header yeah, against Aberdeen right. over that moment. We beat them at Ibrox 2 We beat them with 10 men up at Pataudry 2-1. Uh, again, I'm captain of the team. Came straight back in, big wall was injured. I'm captain of the team through that spell as well. Straight back in against Hearts with the armband. Great. Brought buzzing to be back. Like a privilege and an honour to wear the armband as well. Uh, I got injured. Robbie, I started one game when I came back after that. Yeah. One game. Like, that's it's no right. It just yeah. doesn't make sense. And one game I started. What was the game? The game was the week before the old fun game. The 4 0. They beat Dundee 4 0. So I scored opener. Like, that was my only start the second half of that season. This, 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 it doesn't add up, Robbie, you know. Like, people can say what they want. There was a reason why I wasn't playing. Mm. So I'm sitting there anyway. So I'm sitting there thinking, did I say Sunday? I know, I know, I know what's going on. I know what's, I know I'm going to be finished at the end of the year. And I looked along and I seen Tav. And literally, Tav, I caught eyes with Tav, and Tav was like looking at me and he was like saying to me, and you guys say something? And I was like, and I said, and just when that happened, Big Waldo started. 
Yeah. Started just fucking letting the boys know, having his view. He's obviously sat and watched the game because uh, he was injured. And that, that and listen, things then start to because other people chirp in off the back of it, it becomes it encourages debate. Uh, I then say my piece, and then that's like, next minute, you know, obviously all hell breaks loose after uh, the aftermath of it. Where I'm actually thinking, what the fuck's going on? You know, there's nothing that's happened in that dressing room to what happened in a million other dressing rooms well, that I've been in. Have you muted yourself there, mate? Sorry? There you go, I couldn't hear you there. Aye, so, aye, so I don't know, mate. Aye, it's, uh, so, listen, there was, without going into major detail, what it was, there was no anything in any other dressing room. I've said that openly. Uh, it, it was just a horrible, a horrible way to finish, you know, like, like, fucking heartbroken, actually. Like, and I know Waldo feels the same. Heartbroken it went that way. It, was, it didn't need to go that way. But I would say there's people within the club at that time had agendas that, that was to suit their own. You know, self-preservation, things weren't right at the club. Uh, and ultimately, again, off the back of another old firm defeat, there was a couple of skateboats made and it was me and Big Waldo, which, just like I said, you're absolutely heartbroken that you've gave so much of your career and your life to, to that place and it, and it means a lot to you and then you've been you've been kind of treated that way and that says I had to leave I had to I wasn't allowed back into Murray Park to see the boys uh, to see the staff I had to go back in to get my stuff when there was nobody about so I was there I don't know what day it was it was a Thursday afternoon three o'clock I was allowed to go back get my stuff might have been a wee bit earlier actually because I think there's, we Jean was still up in the kitchen the kitchen staff were there but that was pretty much it there was no uh there wasn't any bodies about, any staff about. So I left actually with a black bag and that's it. Maybe about, had a wee walk out, had a wee walk out onto, this, onto the training pitch, had a wee fucking, a wee moment and then fucked off. That's it. Well, so to think that over three spells, won three, well, had three uh, Premiership winning medals, Scottish Cup, League Cup, and for you to finish on that way just seems strange. Because even what you're describing, I mean, I play junior football and if you lose in that manner in a semi-final, that, that's par for the course, that sort of reaction. So, listen, you, you've touched on it anyway. I think you've you kind of covered it all and I appreciate your honesty there, mate. Uh, so, disappointing way to leave the club, but I'm pretty sure the overriding feeling looking back on your time is one of, of positivity. Of course, yes. Listen, never, that'll never be, ever be taken away. I said that, said that before, like, football, listen, it's football. Listen, in this day and age, like, it's a different... Football is always going to be the same in terms of the game and how it's played and, and what, what you need to actually do to actually have a career in it. But it is different and there's things, a lot of things that are surrounding football these days. And it's uh, sometimes there's decisions that are made that are no actually in the best interest of football clubs. Uh, but listen, like you say, no, no bitterness towards the club at all. It's uh, I had eight years there in total. Yeah. Unbelievable years. Like I say, met some amazing people, played with some top, top players, had some amazing times, great memories. Like I said, um, for me, I, I was built to play for the club. I, I love, I love, I want my winner. I want to win. I've got the right standards. I never took that jersey for granted or walking into Murray Park training every day was never taken for granted. It was uh, appreciated every day. And uh, like I say, loved it. So, no, nah, absolutely Nothing but positive memories. Yeah, disappointed in how it ended. It didn't need to end that. That's the thing. It didn't need to. Because see, I knew there's a time you're going to have to go as a player, but it could have been managed so much better. You don't need to force me out. You just need to be honest. If you're going to go off on a different road, just tell me, Kenny, listen, you're 38. You need to get to it. You know, we're going to move on and we're going to go down a different road. No problem. I've had my time. You know, I've had my time. But I really believed even off the field stuff, I still had, I could have still had a role to play, you know, and helping this next Cheers. This next phase come because having the experiences that, again, when I touched on it earlier with Davis and McGregor, they've been crucial to coming back into the football club. Forget how good the players are and their abilities. It's about their mentalities. It's about their winning mentality. It's about the fact, again, they thrive on that environment. They're playing in that pressure cooker. And that's what I felt I could have helped that over the, over, the, over the years, even after finishing playing. But listen, it was taken away and that's, that's football. Uh, you move on, you move onwards and upwards, you've got to move on to the next stage of your career. And that's obviously what I've done initially playing. Uh, we stint in playing management, which I loved. Uh, and then obviously now on to, on to coaching in Australia. So that is what I'm obviously going to go on to, mate. So what's, what's next for you then? Have you your own managerial aspirations? Obviously you spoke about 
you felt you had a place back at the club at that time? Do you have a sort of view to move back to the UK, maybe even Rangers at some point? What's your future aspirations? Listen, I want to, I want to get to the top of the, of the, of the coaching game now. It's, it's, you're on the first rung yet now. It's, uh, your start's like starting all over again as a player. You now need to, you need to work tirelessly to get to, to get the opportunity. When you get the opportunity, you need to, again, in this game, you need to be successful to get to that next stage. So it's, it's, uh, it's just working, working away, trying to, trying to bring success here. What that will lead to an opportunity is whether it be me and Robbo going elsewhere as a, as a team or whether if opportunities come up, he's under no illusion. He knows I want to be a manager. So if opportunities come up, then it's, uh, and it's the right opportunity. Then, then I'll look at it, but I'm absolutely loving my role at the moment. It helps when you're working with somebody who's like-minded, who's driven the same way as you, who's driven for like to win, to be successful, to play the game the way I want to play the game as well. So it's uh, it's been a, it's been a tough year to be fair because you're coming into a club where brilliant facilities, top club, top people, but like in any kind of coaching or management role, you there is you're having to deal with a, like a, a group that's potentially not your group. Uh, so you're trying to find get the best out of people. Still, we're still bringing players into the ball, and it can help you. So we've had a decent year so far. Uh, last four or five games have not been where we'd want to be, but we're in our hands. If we can get the results towards the end of the season, we can finish off on a on a real high. No wait, mate. Well, listen, mate. Really appreciate uh, the time you've given it. Is obviously we've actually been on here quite long, so I, I won't hold you too much longer. But we'll finish on a wee quick fire question, right? So we've got five questions here for you. So I've written down. Uh, right, so. First one, best stadium you've ever played in? Oof, I'll go for, obviously, outside the Ibrox. Yeah. We'll go for probably the New Wembley. New Wembley. Incredible. Or, or the Emirates. Or the Emirates was a top stadium as well. Best player you've ever played against? Funny question, that one, because you always think, well, you play against Ronaldo. Ronaldo's one of the best players I've played against. Exactly, isn't it? Exactly. So I always look at... With, Centre backs that I played against. So over my kind of year, I probably played against them all. Like you've got Cannavaro, you've got Nesta, you've got Puyo, you've got Pique, you've got Terry, you've got uh, Ferdinand, uh, Carvalho, and, and Terry were incredible to play right. against. So Campbell, he was a top, 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 top opponent. But I think that day at Hamden when I'm playing against Nesta and Cannavaro, it was again, again because I had a good day against. Because I loved playing against the best. Yeah. You know, it's a real opportunity, not just to work. Yeah, players might be quicker or stronger, or but, but it was working out how you could get success against them. And that day, I had a really, really good day that day, Scotland v Italy, against, again, a really, really formidable pairing. Did you just say Cannavaro because you look like him? I'll say Cannavaro because he won the <laughs> World of the Year that year. I'll take that by if I look like Fabio. <laughs> uh, best strike partner you've ever had? Loads of good ones, you know, loads and loads. Wolves had a couple, George and Dan, Nathan Blake. Rangers had moles, uh, but I'd tough to come back to Boydy. I just think it was a, we were a really, really good pairing, a really good foil for each other. I felt we complimented each other. I chucked him on my fair share of goals, but what I could guarantee is a big fella would be getting 25, 30 every year. Yeah. So, uh, no, a real, real good pairing. That's right. Your favourite Rangers goal? Too many, like, there's just too many, like, but every old firm goal, right? Aye. Every old, apart from the one that was in a 5-1. Uh, <laughs> but the old firm goals are special. You know, they're special, special memories. And like I say, you'd say, Don, at the start, I had a decent record in the games. So uh, that, but I think it's got to be the goal, the, the, the semi-final. This is I'm shaking, you want to go out, I want to stay in a while.